So we got these leaked videos of Tucker Carlson. Came out uh, throughout the day and yesterday. Media Matters releases these videos where Tucker's apparently bad-mouthing Fox and then also bad-mouthing people around the set. Here's the crazy thing, though. For one, these leaks appear to be backfiring because they make Tucker look hilarious. And the other thing is, yo, I'm pretty sure they're deep fakes and not real. And some people have mentioned this, but there's one video where it, it's just very obviously a deep fake video. Like Tucker's eyes are like floating around and his mouth isn't moving properly. I wonder if someone made these fake videos, sent them into Media Matters who believed it. And uh, I wonder if they're now going to be sued into oblivion because these things look obviously fake. But we'll talk about that. The reason why I thought that one was so important is because I think they're deep fakes. And I think we should talk about what that means for the media landscape. But I know there's also another very big story. I have good news for you. Everyone, please listen. Late night talk shows, they're gone. That's right. It's finally over. At least temporarily, thanks to the writer's strike, there's no Jimmy Kimmel, Stephen Colbert, Fallon, and uh, who's that other guy that I always forget? Who's it? Myers. Seth mm. Myers. Yeah, he's the least important one. And then Saturday Night Live, also gone. Yeah. Uh, Bill Maher, gone. Mm -hmm. John uh, uh, Oliver, gone. Yep. And then the weirdest thing is that you have news commentary shows ceasing because they don't have writers. So as if, as if we needed any more proof, it was fake news. Oh, funny, fu uh, funny enough, we're still here. We don't have writers. We just riff. So we'll do that. And uh, a bunch of other news, too. But before we get started, my friends, head over to castbrew.com. This show is brought to you by Cast Brew Coffee. It is our coffee brand. And you can pick up your delicious Rise with Roberto Jr. Cast Brew Coffee. It's our breakfast blend. It's a light roast. And with every purchase of Rise with Roberto Jr., you will receive a picture of Roberto Jr. right there on the back of the bag. And you can cherish that image. He is our rooster, and he is just the best. And uh, you can also pick up Appalachian Nights, our signature blends, as well as Colombian and French roast. And get this, we actually have a subscription option where you can sign up to receive this coffee regularly and actually save money. After your sixth order, uh, uh, or your or your sixth, after your sixth order, you will receive, after six months, you actually start getting a discount. The, the, the coffee will become cheaper. And we're, I, I think there's an error. We're trying to make it even cheaper, so we'll figure it out. But uh, the show's brought to you by our new coffee brand, Cast Brew Coffee, so you support us by going there. And also go to TimCast.com, click Join Us to become a member, and you will get access to our Discord server where you can hang out with like-minded individuals and also call in to our members-only show and actually talk to us, be a part of the show, and ask us questions. Every Monday through Thursday at 10, 10 p.m., we have a members-only uncensored show on the front page of TimCast.com. So become a member if you want to watch that. Smash that like button. Subscribe to this channel. Share the show with your friends. Joining us tonight to talk about this and so much more is Taylor Hansen. Thanks for having me, Tim. Not the singer. Not the singer. Not the umbop. Not the umbop, uh, no. Independent journalist, field reporter. That's what I'm best known for. Uh, you know, covering the 2020 riots, Summer of Love, documented the death of Ashley Babbitt. And now, most recently, I've been kind of exposing the... Uh, transgender cult of uh, all ages drag shows right on well thanks for hanging out we got a bunch of Happy news to too there's stories around that we got another story about uh, biden sending troops to the border so this should get really interesting we got seamus coglin hanging out i'm seamus i run a youtube channel called freedom tunes we publish cartoons usually twice a week we uploaded a cartoon today uh, called the debunkers we were debunking a a vice or i'm sorry a vox video on these horrible anti-trans laws that y'all <laughs> might enjoy and I also have a podcast called Shamer, and we stream Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. Cool. I'm Hannah Claire Brimlow. I am a writer for TimCast.com. I just don't script the uh, live IRL segments, and I'm happy to be here. Well, we do have that gag where Jack Posobiec drove up to the house on a little electric bike with carrying the TimCast IRL scripts. That was fun. You're backtracking. It's a gag. I, no, it they're wasn't they're lying real. to you. Right. Everything is 100% scripted here. Stay oh, on it was script, here. Taylor. They're posted on the walls, guys. Yeah, we have prompters for everybody, and it's just two hours of us reading teleprompters. So we all have our laptops out because we're actually just looking for our next line. That was a good point, Hannah Claire. Also, Serge is here. Wouldn't it be great if every time I missed the audio and I missed this mute, you guys would think it was all scripted? That'd be hilarious. It'd be such a good actor. Anyways, let's go. Let's jump into this first story that I think spells uh, the apocalypse for us. We have this from the Daily Mail. I resent it. Nobody watches it because it sucks. Tucker Carlson's, Carlson's unloads on Fox Nation and jokes about postmenopausal fans in leaked videos from his axed streaming show. Now, what I don't understand... This is why, you know, some of these videos came out yesterday and now we've got more today. And the reason why I didn't really, I, I didn't really say anything is because they, I thought they were obvious deepfakes. 
I saw people posting these videos and I was like, ha, that's funny. They made a deep fake of Tucker Carlson. Now I'm reading in the news that these are serious videos. And I'm going to show you one that I think is absolute proof. These are deep fakes. So uh, I will warn you, there is swearing. So uh, we, if you have kids and you're listening, uh, uh, we have, we're going to play this video. But uh, take, take a listen. Listen to this. And for those that are watching, watch the video. Here we go. Okay. I'm not, you know what? I'm not qualified on that score, I will say. I thought his girlfriend was kind of yummy. Just kidding. Just kidding. In case this is being pulled off the bird. Yeah, the bird. Hey, media matters for America. Go fuck yourself. That's the first thing I want to say tonight. <laughs> Second thing is, totally kidding. I don't even know what his girlfriend looks like. And if I did, I would not find her yummy. I think that's a deep fake. His eyes look, look his, a little his weird. His eyes like are droops. floating. Like yeah. his head moves and his eyes don't well, move. When his mouth is like doing this weird Slightly outside off. thing. I hope it's real, but it looks. Just, yeah. just maybe watch, watch, watch it again and look at, his, look at his teeth. Look at his upper teeth and watch this video. And so you'll notice there's a weird thing that happens that looks like artifacting. Also, what is he even talking about? Right there. There's that part right there. And the hands look fake, too. His eye looks a little weird. Yeah, look at his well. eyes. Oh, the thing with the mouth, for sure. The eyes definitely look funky. But here, we're going to take it a level deeper. What if they actually got recorded footage of Tucker, and then they doctored it to make it look freaky and off so that people would say it looks freaky and off and then get called conspiracy theorists? How, how's that? Or it's actually a completely real video. And, and just Tucker calling Tucker, we're calling him ugly. <laughs> I hope no look, look at his look eyes. Like look at the way his face looks. Look at his uh, teeth. Oh, that's no way that's real. <laughs> Tucker's sitting at home like a single tear coming down. He's, he's like, watching this right now like, oh. Well, he should I'm come on this podcast and defend himself then. No. That's really the answer. I mean, it, it looks like artifacting. It looks fake. I just, it, it, I, I can't, when I saw the first few videos, I'm like, these are not real. Well, I, I, I didn't think they were real videos. I saw them on Twitter and people were like, haha, this is funny. And I'm like, oh, that's a funny deep fake of Tucker yelling at Media Matters. And then it's apparently Media Matters is claiming it's real. Everyone in this company is thrilled. Look at his mouth. You're doing this. I've gotten more calls from people about it. Oh, that's great. Whatever I got to say, I, so, I, I came you know what I think? To, uh, I think some of it might be real. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. So, like somebody took real videos and then made deep fakes, put them together and sent it so that Media Matters would fall for it. I completely agree. Oh. Sex, I'd love to hit some of the fine points of technique. Wait, what? I mean, I've been on yours enough times, it's great. I think it's totally cool. So let's, um, is, if we're going to talk about sex, I'd love to hit some of the fine points of technique. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way that's real. See, I feel like it could be. Like, well, everything be Josh and show. It's totally up to you. We well, can it looks like some, some of the videos look very though, real and they add up, but then some of them look completely fake. Mm -hmm. So like maybe, like you said, there's a mixture of real videos, but then they're like, oh, let's see how far we can push it. I love the or idea that someone... It's both. Yeah. It's, it's real video with tiny bits Slightly spliced edited. in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was I, I was talking about this with Trump. I said in 2024, the deep fakes are not going to be overt fake videos of Trump saying something awful. It's going to be a real press conference where they tweak one word very slightly that way, no one knows what really happened because everyone will agree Trump was there. Trump gave a press conference. Mm. Trump Trump did say he did not like Gouda cheese on his cheeseburger, but there will be like one word tweaked. The example I give is they'll take something like when he said, I'm not talking about the white nationalists because they should be condemned totally. And they'll change it to some of them should be condemned totally. That way, both the left and the right agree he was there. He condemned white nationalists. But then the left will only ever see the video of him saying some of them. And they'll go, he's trying to defend the, uh, some of them, and, and he's not even condemning them all. And then the right will hear him say they should be. So the context becomes different, and no one knows which one's the real one. Or yeah. they're rapists, right? That's another right. classic one. But to see, that was all out of context manipulation. But even that, it's like, which there was he? Because he kept saying they are sending there, as in people from there, like they're criminals, they're et cetera, et cetera. But then... When they transcript the final there, they put it as T H E Y apostrophe R E as if he was saying they are rapists in Mexico as opposed to Mexico is sending their rapists over here. Right, 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 right. Saying, right, there are people it's, there who are rapists versus they are. It's crazy yeah, like how ownership versus such a small tweak can make such a big difference mm -hmm. psychologically for people in the way that they consume content. Like, I think. Deep fakes come 2024 and election season are actually probably going to be a pretty big problem when it comes to misinformation. Oh, yeah.
Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it's unavoidable, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it just keeps getting better and better and more accurate and more realistic. I will say, though, my favorite, like, deep fakes are the, you know, not so serious ones where, like, it has, like, Trump, Biden, and Obama playing games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're just, like, swearing at each other. I saw other. one where they're talking to Taylor Swift about yeah. her <laughs> yeah. breakup or something. I think you're right. The hard thing is people will end up having two understandings of media, right? Any clip that goes viral, there'll be one that your echo chamber of Twitter yep. sees, and there'll be the one that I feel like it's already like chamber. that, though, for mm -hmm. the most part. Like, we live exactly. in completely alternate realities. Like, completely. There's there's no similarities between the left and the right anymore, regardless of how hard you look for it. And even when they are, it's overshadowed by us versus them. And I think it's going to just continue to be like that. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a very legitimate question of how much effect the deep fakes are actually going to have because the media lies constantly anyway, and they're never held accountable for it. So what, what, this what? isn't exactly going to be any kind of change of pace. Why would Tucker say F you media matters? Because they suck. Yeah, but like, we, we've talked about Media Matters, uh -huh. but why would he randomly, while uh -huh. being secretly recorded, just scream this out and then that video be sent to Media Matters? It looks like all of these videos that are taken are right before his broadcast, I think. At least the ones that look real. It looks like he's probably just like chatting with one of his producers or something. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, right. But like saying F like... you Media Matters is very, very specific. Yeah. And I, I just kind of feel like that's weird. I don't know. I feel like a lot of people know Media <laughs> Matters is... Not yeah. a very trustworthy. I mean, they've attacked yeah, Tucker Hannah Claire over says over that every morning. I like, Every time she walks up. into the office. No, like... I never think about media matters, and I know they wish I did. But yeah. the thing is, like, I think for Tucker or you know any kind of office place, you have kind of one outlet that you know doesn't like you, right? So you being able to them. say like, "Oh, I'm sorry, guys," like, you know, that's true. F I will say, one. media matters does write some great hit pieces. Their hit pieces are always entertaining through and through. They're one of my favorite companies to get the, hit pieces the, written on. The by. best is they wrote a uh, they wrote a best of list of Tim Cast IRL episodes, <laughs> and the best part was Seamus wasn't on it. I wasn't on it. I was so upset. It's that's disgraceful. Why, and that's <laughs> so and so funny. that's what I said. I, I said the same thing Tucker said to media matters. I would well, never just, say that on air. It was, swears are bad. It's well, funny no. because they were trying to find. Any episode where someone said something offensive, and they'd find someone who said something that was like marginally <laughs> warm, like just and then miles. Like they could squint and, and turn their head and make it bad. And, and then, then here's Seamus, <laughs> who's on the show for like seven months, arguing that gay people shouldn't be allowed to get married. Just that, well, not that they shouldn't be allowed, but that it's literally not possible. Gay marriage doesn't exist. They just don't they, give you attention. They, took, and they, they wouldn't they even put your name. Yeah, on exactly. The list. That's not the definition of marriage. But they did put a clip of me up in one of their articles and the way they labeled it was they said, Tim Cast host <laughs> says marriage equality is bad, making it sound like it's you. And so people right. were sharing the article going, this is why we can't trust these people who say they're disaffected liberals. He's uttering right-wing talking points. I was like, I said that. <laughs> yeah, that was me. I thought they and then Jezebel, and no, 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 Jezebel did that. Jezebel took one of my greatest hits, was one Ian. of my best quotes about no-fault divorce and how horrible it is and how people would be more selective about who they cho chose to marry if that wasn't on the table, and they attributed it to Ian. <laughs> <laughs> they gave out they of gave, all people they gave, they I know. They they to literally Ian. not watch this show. They're the like, most was it, mild was it person. The, well, they're like, was it like the traditional Catholic or like the new age like hippie guy? Which, who do who do we think said this here? <laughs> I mean, it's possible Ian was saying <laughs> things. It's possible I, Ian was saying things against divorce as well. But they no. literally they just I took like one the of idea. <laughs> Ian was like, "Divorce is super based," and they're like, "Ian Crossland said never allow anyone to get divorced for any reason." Is it the trad Catholic or the hippie guy? Yeah, I like the idea guy. that they you know think? you want the attention, so they're like, exactly. "We're not going to quote him." <laughs> that's no. why. That's why in their league footage, they're like, "F you, Ian Crossland." Yeah, and seriously. I'm no, like, "No, that, with, they meant that for me." With the Tim Cast list, what I remember is on Twitter, everyone being like. Thank you so much for this honor, Media Matters. Like, I did appear on TimCast. Thank you so much. Like, it, it's sort of its own joke. I mean, I'm sure there are people who trust Media Matters and feel as though uh, this was a true I don't condemnation. How. But, you know, it, there are, I could name a handful of organizations that, like, if you get a label from them, it doesn't mean anything no. because they are so biased well, recently, and they are so unethical. Recently, Vice did a kind of like semi hit piece on me regarding my drag coverage and said that I lied about this and exaggerated and said that, you know, a little girl was left unattended. And then now, they're out of business. They're out of business because so, they lied about you. Because yeah, they came after you. Because they lied about you. I mean, you. You're power. I posted, uh, well, I, I posted that meme on Twitter. Let, kept, me, let me pull it up. Keep, keep, yeah, I, I just want to mention something about this. Part of why they have so much difficulty rating. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, let's look at this real quick first. Actually, it's super funny. It's, uh, a, it's a super ripped <laughs> Shiba saying, it's like Vice. Then I will go to the most war-torn places on earth to expose the dirty politics. Now, 10 reasons why SpongeBob is homophobic. That's so based. I mean, but it's like true because I worked there and then I left. 
And, you know, it was like I was in Ukraine at the start of the protest, which eventually turned into the conflict. I was in Turkey during the Gezi Park riots and, and the tear gas and all that stuff. I was in Egypt during the revolution. And then uh, they decided that they wanted to complain about feminist nonsense. Mm -hmm. yep. See, we need we need a right wing version of vice and not even necessarily like a right wing. We just need a new vice somewhere that's going to go in these war torn countries and expose mm -hmm. these things and do these drug documentaries and all the great work that they used to do. We just need to bring that back, but with a little bit of a twist because they don't want to do it anymore. Uh, I feel like I was that just gonna graphic mention, applies to all journalists nowadays. 100%. Too. Yeah, it's all about uh, people call themselves a journalist when they're opinion columnists. Mm -hmm. But going back to what I was saying a moment ago here in the conversation on media matters and how poorly they label conservative talking points and their their limited understanding of where the Overton window is with conservative thought because they consider all of it to be horrible. Part of this is a product of the fact that the left very poorly understands what conservatives actually believe. Jonathan Haidt's research has shown this, that conservatives have a far better understanding of what liberals believe than liberals have of, of what conservatives believe and anyone who's ever had a conversation with someone on the left can tell you that and so they assume that we're all sort of at the same place on the political spectrum or where we are in the political spectrum doesn't matter and it ends up manifesting itself that way a few years ago there was research done on youtube and how it radicalizes young people and there were these really milk toast libertarian organizations that got put to the right of me and i remember thinking that I know that guy. He's super libertarian. He's absolutely to the left of me. Why? And they put him as like far right and put me as like a centrist conservative. Like, what are you talking about? Have you ever seen those videos? I think the cut does them where you'll get like a group of girls and they have to yeah. like rank themselves in order of like attractiveness or something. From and then Jubilee. they bring in guys. And it's the complete Jubilee. opposite. Yeah. Yes. Like, no one has oh, any right. idea what the, what the scale is supposed well, to my be. My favorite was when there was this snooty woman. They did this one where it was like rank IQ. yourself. Uh, IQ. IQ. Yep. And this woman was just talking about how smart she was wasn't trying she was the stupidest has person. all these majors and everything yeah. and then the one person without like any majors ends up being the smartest out of all of them i think there was a study done too where, like correlates like testosterone levels mm -hmm. and political views and as people start working out like if liberals start working out and their testosterone raises and as it's a continuous raise their ideology quite literally shifts to more conservative mm. and it's correlated with testosterone mandatory boot camp well. <laughs> yep. every american mandatory boot camp get their testosterone everyone's got to eat a steak that's why they want you eating bugs and being vegan because it lowers your testosterone and makes you frail and dainty. You want to know what's really funny? If that's what you want to be, by all means. Bud Light's waiting for you. It, because <laughs> because you mentioned Estrogen, this. Estrogen, gotta love it. When my, when my grandfather was young, he thought he was going to be a priest. So he spent the ages of like 12 to 20 in a seminary. And then he ended up fighting in the Second World War. And he said basic training in the army was easy because of how difficult it was <laughs> in the seminary. Like that's how we used to train priests. They had to be super hardcore they yeah. have to be able to do really difficult things. Yeah. And now, it, not just the priesthood, but everything that a person needs to receive any kind of education to do is so unbelievably watered down that we can't expect anything of them. I mean, the shows, like the drag shows that I go to, a lot of them are hosted in churches. Oh and my almost gosh. every single time, it is a woman who is a priest, and she's, you know, lesbian this, lesbian mm -hmm. that. Is and that Episcopal? Not a priest. Yeah, yeah. Not a priest. Certain yeah. Exactly. Certain, certain uh, Christian denominations allow priestesses, even though there's no such thing as a priestesshood founded by Christ anywhere in Scripture. Mm -hmm. What, what, that's that. That's what, uh, Episcopalian. Is that the religion? Episcopalians do it. There's a number of the the there's a number it's, of like. I think there was a Baptist. He's, 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 Tucker's Episcopalian. Yeah. Episcopalians are. Notorious I am also Episcopalian. We do like they did allow yeah. it. It's one of the reasons I left the church. But like Baptists allow it. The United Methodist yep. Church in Texas or like the Methodist churches one. are always the ones with the trans flags. They're yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And so and like I have friends who grew up very liberal and they specifically seek out progressive churches. So having a female priest is a way to say like, hello, yeah. it's us. We have I mean, we are part of the left idea. Theology, but I think ultimately it is a, a, a sign that they are selling their theology mm -hmm. to be a part of culture. Well, you'll hear mm -hmm. often, I know I heard this a lot when I was going to Anglican and Episcopalian churches, uh, was that, you know, church attendance is down. So we have to find a way to appeal to the young people. And so, you know what a great idea is? We'll, we'll put up our rainbow flag and we'll get a, we'll get a lady priest. And it's exactly, never the way. Did you ever see the video of them, the church that like painted the rainbow? everywhere and then that one guy came by as she was painting the rainbow he's like what are you doing like this is a disgrace like mm -hmm. you call yourself a christian like tell me where it says this is allowed in the bible yeah and she couldn't tell him and then did you she know, explain people... that the rainbow is god's covenant <laughs> <to> not, <laughs> yeah, that, you know it's meant for <laughs> the I mean, sky like, <laughs> and not outside your church <laughs> well, still you know like yeah take the take the rainbow back well i, I think some people I think came Andrew back that's not why she like, was doing it movement. that's not why she was doing it <laughs> yeah but 
em- embrace the embrace the rainbow. Taste, you know, the rainbow. taste. <laughs> Dude, look, these churches will Man, do they, this. That marketing it's... got you if you just did that. I know they I'm, got I'm me. Dude, you, I saw faith, those commercials so many times. Your own as a scripture, kid. and you're talking about eating. Candy. I know. I'm thinking about Skittles. I'm like, wait a minute, it's a promise. Thinking about that red it. forty. Mm. Uh, but. <laughs> This happens so often where these churches will go, how do we get young people? Let's be the way the world is. Well, hold on. The reason they're out in the world and not in churches is because they want the world and not the church. And if you're just going to offer what the world has, you're not going to attract you're anyone. It would be like if things. a conservative organization was going, you know, there's a lot of left-wing people subscribe to these left-wing platforms. You know, maybe TimCast needs to become more progressive. No, that's not the point. That's yeah. that literally the reason people go to TimCast is because it's not offering what most worldly press outlets are offering with respect to progressivism, right? right? And the reason people go to church is because they don't want what the world is offering. So stop trying to give people a I'm gonna, watered down version of it. I'm going to pull all the way back. So I wanted to jump oh. to this story from Tucker Carlson. We have this from valuetainment.com. Check this out. Patrick Bet David offers Tucker Carlson $100 million. It's a lot of money, dude. Actually, it's $25 million. It's, it's $20 million a year over five years. So this is uh, the Valuetainment podcast is offering Tucker Carlson a $100 million contract. I'm going to be honest. I kind of feel like it's just a stunt. I mean, I'm sure it's a legitimate offer, but I'm also confident that Patrick Bet David and the Value Tammy people know there's no way Tucker would yeah. take this deal. Why would he? There's he's no gonna, reason. He's going to launch his it. own thing and he's going to make a billion dollars. Mm-hmm. So there's just no reason for a deal like this. But you can see just how valuable people consider Tucker Carlson and Fox News. Oh boy, what see, do you I'm, think I'm surprised he would... Rumble hasn't tried yet. They probably did. Yeah, behind the scenes. But what what would an independent launch from Tucker look like? Like, is he going to go on Rumble? Is he going to go on YouTube? Like. Where do you literally he, facilitate this show? His own website. His own website. I, I am here to announce that Tim Cast is going to make an offer to Tucker Carlson <laughs> of uh, $100,000 per year to work full time because we can't afford $100 million. <laughs> That's the best we can do. Come on, Tucker. <laughs> it's worth it, Tucker. Out. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, you can hang out here with Seamus. Yeah. Just see how much fun we'll that make, would be. We'll, we have we'll make so many eggs. Together. They have Paid great glass eggs. bottled water. But it's worth it. So, it's so uh, Patrick Bet David offered Tucker Carlson $100 million over five years, an equity stake in Valuetainment, president of Valuetainment, and a board seat to project your strategic vision and voice, your own podcast and other daily weekly shows, documentaries and movies covering topics you care about. What else? We are all ears. Our conviction about freedom, liberty, and truth run deep. We believe we are the absolute right fit for you in America. And I think they're in Florida, too. So maybe there, might, there, there, there could be something happening here. Maybe maybe this is, is, is not so much a, P, a PR stunt as it is they've already made a deal. Ooh. I just feel like we saw earlier this year when people were discussing their contracts out loud and lots of drama. Yeah, came I was going to say, like, what if Tucker publishes the go. contract? <laughs> Tucker's <laughs> like, they gave me this contract that says they're only going to give me $100 million over four years. I can make way more money than that. But that includes all of my staff, <laughs> which includes- get paid a lot of money. <laughs> it also includes production costs because we like to make skits. It's yeah. going to be a, a lot. I love and Tucker's I would just skits. prefer this didn't happen. <laughs> uh-huh. I mean, I, I have said for a while that I think there will be a big push from mainstream media outlets that are trying to compete with Fox to try and get Tucker Carlson on their show. I don't know. I mean, after years, he's he was on Fox for like, what, over a decade? He's been doing well, I think mainstream Newsmax media. Offered him well, his show is only, was only, what, six years? But he was Five he years? was like on the circuit beforehand. He was doing mainstream television appearances for a long time. I wonder, and you can probably speak to this better than I can, Tim, but transitioning to being fully independent with in-house production as opposed to having a company to fall back on, like there is, that isn't just something you do overnight. Not everyone is cut out to, to make that change. And I wonder if there is a comfort in sort of staying with a, a medium that you know. I mean, I would imagine being under contract is a lot more comfortable than just doing your own thing. Um, I mean, but you saw how, I mean, his video on Twitter, when he released a statement, the amount of views that that racked up, I mean, he, I'm pretty sure he broke his viewership live compared to what he normally has done like on Fox. 20 times yeah. the viewership. I, think I mean, that that, that would be million. cool to see as an integration into Twitter or but something along those lines. The, the, the Twitter video is different from his show. Cause I was saying this before, his show gets 3.3 million on average. But not everybody watches every single episode of Tucker Carlson tonight. Yeah. So if you watch three episodes per month, if the average person only watches, let's, let's, say, let's say they watch five episodes, that means there's actually four times as many unique viewers because they're only watching one in five episodes and he's got, you know, or, he's, or he, one in four episodes because he does it, you know, once uh, once a day every every week. And that means that if you were to take all of his viewers and have them watch one video, you'd get 60 million, you'd get 70 million yeah. or whatever. So... 
I don't know if it, it correlates properly. And also the people who watch the video included leftists who've never seen his show before. Mm, exactly. Well, and also if I mean, say like he would take like the Twitter route or anything like that is the boomers. No boomers are going to see it. I mean, I feel like that's the majority of people that actually watched his show, too, is yeah. the older generations. And it's going to basically completely cut off their access. I mean, I'm pretty sure Fox News lost like what half of their viewers uh, just from after they fired him. So you're already yeah. seeing the kind of shift in their audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's part of what's so sad about the whole situation. Everyone keeps talking about how Tucker's going to be better off without Fox, and they're probably right in terms of how much he's going to have. But he was very to important at Fox. Yeah. But yeah, he, he was very important at Fox, and there are a lot of people who just are not going to know where to find him, well, unfortunately, he, but or, or won't discover him in the first place. He's the only populist they had. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, maybe this is more about 2024 than anything. Well, yeah, that's what yeah. I'm, I was thinking is what if because I, I thought I saw had seen something about Rupert Murdoch, you know, negotiating a new contract with him and him still actually being under that contract. I'm not sure how accurate that is. Um, but I mean, in doing so, he's basically gagged. I mean, he can't sign any other contract from mm -hmm. what I'm aware of. It's like if you shut Tucker Carlson down during election season, that's when he's the most effective. Yep. In my mind, if I'm the enemy and I'm trying to silence and deplatform Tucker Carlson, I mean, you guys saw the AOC video. Deplatforming works. You know, you do it right before election season when he has the most power and the most momentum and he can actually and the primaries are coming up mm -hmm. and who who is tucker supporting i'm not even entirely sure yeah good question i mean obviously it's gonna be a republican so that's already i would bands. imagine he's gonna support Dave whoever Smith. the i mean the lead runner is i, I think because i mean you got probably desantis v trump I would assume he's probably going to support Trump just because he has, I think, a higher chance of winning and becoming the nominee. But I mean, regardless of whoever the nominee is, he's obviously going to support the Republican candidate. Yeah, no mm -hmm. question. Yeah. Who is supposed to fill his slot? Like, what's happening with the eight o'clock? Oh, they picked right somebody, didn't they? Well, every, yeah, everyone was ripping on him. Yeah, he posted Not a tweet thing, and got like, ratioed to like absolutely. It must health. be so significant that I have definitely, yeah, exactly. I'm definitely aware of it. That was the hardest thing about watching all this. Like, what is Fox's plan? There is no Lawrence one Jones. I don't Ooh, even know who that okay. is. Didn't Three days they get ago, rid they of bon, this. Uh, Bongino too. Bongino left yeah. a couple weeks before. They, they couldn't uh, negotiate a contract. Okay. Uh, so he, he, I loved that the day when Tucker was released and Don Lamont, uh, Lamont was released at the same time too. Nobody was talking about the CNN contractor about Don Lemon. It was yeah, just all cared. Tucker Carlson. Well, nobody we were kind of we laughing about, about it a little bit. And yeah. well, in in. Everyone was speculating about Tucker Carlson. Why would they be getting rid of him? What story did Where he cover he that upset them? Where is he going? He's so important. And with Don Lemon, no one was like, yeah, Don Lemon did all that really important journalistic work that exposed powerful people. And it was we, like, yeah, no, he didn't. Get ever it. since that like misogynistic clip from Don Lemon, which wasn't misogynistic at all. What did he say? Just, I, I think he, he made a like a lighthearted joke. I'm not he said women sure. are not in their prime in their 50s or Oh, early. yeah. He did whoa, get in trouble for that. Whoa, yeah. I remember he got in trouble from that, and then that was like the last controversy he had. Uh, right? That is That's, so awesome. That, that is and then just he, he said something like, if you look online, it's like 20s, 30s, or 40s, women in their 50s are, 50s are not in their prime. Well, he's and talking about like, men in their prime, too, and the and, difference in but, age. But she was That's like, what cool. is the, the, the other one was like, what does that mean? Like childbirthing like is that what you're talking about and he's like i'm just saying google it and then when, <laughs> yeah. you, when you googled it it was the weird, funniest thing it's like women are in their prime in their 40s and 50s and it's like <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious snopes yeah, okay. found out right like then, fact check false yeah pants on fire Dude, Donald. human <laughs> beings are in their prime in their 20s like I, anybody else pandering 20s, is, early 30s well, yeah. especially males early 30s, too yeah there's a lot of push for women saying like oh you're in your prime in your 40s because you're more confident and stuff like that like i would argue that like Depends on what we're evaluating yeah. here, right? Yeah. Like a woman in her 40s is not in her prime to bear children. I was, I was going to say, I don't think you're in your prime but if like, you're going through menopause. If you menopause. mean you're in your prime, like you're feeling good about yourself and you're more accomplished and maybe you're more economically established, like I could see that argument. It just depends on what your your metrics are. That's what I don't like about these generalizations. It's maybe like, maybe that was 33. the argument they're making is that when women can no longer have kids, they're now in their prime to work and be CEOs. Yep. Oh, exactly. Okay. But for real, because like, I human see beings, that. Yeah. Human beings are utilities, right? And depending on which part of the culture you're standing uh, on and looking at them from, they're either a, a sexual utility or an economic utility. I mean, the Rockefellers both, made but sure they're not a that. person. Well, yeah, we're going to have those baby pods. You saw those baby pods, right? Baby pods? The little baby factories? Yeah, the baby yeah, factories. Yeah. The, the viral video where it's like, we will gestate humans in pods. <laughs> I thought that was like the new politically correct term for birthing person. <laughs> <laughs> baby factories. <laughs> baby factory. No, no, no. It's not woman. It's offensive. It's baby factory. It's not, it's not, it's, it's not woman. It's birthing person. It's like... Uh, what? It's like the birthing. new term for uh, young mother's homes. You know where they used to like send girls who got pregnant? Instead, what it's is, just like birthing factories. <laughs> it's, uh, Come what, collect what, your baby here. What, Stork what's workshop. the game that just came out? Like Dark Souls or something came out? 
that everybody was excited Elden about. Ring. Elden Ring. Yeah, yeah. which is and, basically Dark Souls. And when, you, when you're making your character, you can't choose male or female. You can choose type 1 or type 2. <laughs> like like it's like, diabetes. It, it was something. It was, it was like A or B or something. It was like no. It was like body type. Choose your body type, and it's like clearly male and female, but it didn't say male and female. And it's just like what 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 is? What well, and is it's this? funny because in those games, usually you can make like really distorted looking characters, like like Skyrim and those kind of like. The, just that genre of games usually you can just make the characters however you want but it seems like they're moving away from that and that was like the biggest part of those games was like creating a sweet like woman that was an orc but looked like a man and now you just can't do any of it well the harry potter game is actually really funny because you can you can customize your character to a crazy degree like you can make a big super masculine guy but has a voice of a little girl <laughs> <laughs> or you can make it's almost like Bob's Burgers or uh, Venture Brothers. You can make like a small female character who talks like this, <laughs> and then it's, and then you could make a male character who's in the girls' dorm or a female character in the boys' dorm. It's just like I remember they had like but the one game, but trans like, character in the game or something. But they're saying it's transphobic. But that doesn't even make sense that in Harry Potter there'd be a trans character. They can eat, drink magic potions and tra and shape shift. Yeah. They would just be like, I drink a potion. Whoop, now I am. It's magic. There you go. So there's got to be a spell they, for the, everything. The puberty right? blocker potion. And the, yeah. But they don't need that. They have magic. Puberty block oh so. Yeah, exactly. And you're good. Like you can literally turn yourself <laughs> into a cat. <laughs> and then they There's no <laughs> infertility. Ruin your life. -ish. I'm I'm the compassionate one. There, there Cast would, that Bud Light spell. Get that extra estrogen. Oh there would be no furries in Harry Potter because they would just literally turn into animals. They're they just do. Some of them, oh, So hold on. Are all the people in Harry Potter who turn into animals furries? <laughs> that is a, a guess, hot take over there. Trope. I think, yeah, I think it's true. Like, I mean, that was that was the whole theme of the third book, that the one dude was a werewolf, so the other three friends would turn into animals to hang out with him or whatever, because mm -hmm. like werewolf wouldn't attack animal people or something like that. Yeah, I wasn't uh, I wasn't allowed to read Harry Potter because as someone raised in a traditional home, my parents didn't want me to be a nerd. <laughs> I'm sad for you. Yeah. You missed a huge yeah, part of culture. I'm a gigantic nerd. You missed out. Yeah. Did I? Now, now Did how, you read them how later? Do you, how do you interpret the leftist world. arguments in philosophy if you don't know anything about Harry Potter? You I haven't read the foundational theory. Yeah. <laughs> you can't connect. I don't read theory. Trump stuff. is Voldemort. Don't you know what that means? That's actually true. But no. actually, you can't connect with any of the the young people, basically, any of your peers. Well, How can you make them interested in Catholicism if you can't put it in terms of Harry Potter? Here's, here's the secret, Hannah Claire. They can't connect with each other either because of what this culture's done. Yeah, but you're not reaching them either. So yes, they're all I am. just adrift. Uh huh. Look, uh -huh. I'm not reaching them with witchcraft and magic. You, so what's your plan? <laughs> My, ha, to use the power of reason and cartoons. facts and logic here and cartoons go. and make uh, yes absolutely well placed joke here ever, and there that's how you do it did you ever feel like you missed out though because you couldn't read harry potter no i'm kidding i was not not well my parents like frowned upon it but they were never like ah well, harry I mean, potter it's not as bad as like not having watched fast and the furious you know what i mean no oh of course every christmas we watched all of those you films. watched we all of them every you are lying all of them. i declare this a lie no 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 it's true Straight yeah no, fast and the furious classic morning. tradition we, yeah. we watch Fast and Furious every Lies day, and you got ten around. movies. So you're what you're all day. It's on the TV, and you know the the, the people are making dip, and the family's coming in, and they're wearing the fancy sweaters. Yeah, and you watch Fast and then Furious. everyone quotes the movie because they all know the words. I thought to that every was film. Die Hard. Brother. I actually, <laughs> I, I actually didn't watch Fast and Furious as a kid either. I you know you know when I saw Me Fast either. and Furious for the first time, I was on a Greyhound bus, and there was this woman a few seats across from me, and she turns to me, she's like, "Do you want to watch Fast and Furious?" I was like. Yeah, I'll watch that. Sounds like such a yeah, greyhound. Yeah. No, it's true. And then do. she she sat next to me with her laptop and she popped it open and I was like, she's like, these movies are they say they're about cars. It's really about family. And she started playing it and I was I like, I believe you. I was, I'm, dude, I'm not kidding. This actually happened. I was like, and I was watching. I was like, this film is about family. I was like, Shut up. This, let's, no, this let's, actually happened. 50% of the no, time, this, this is like but most this of actually the happened. This is a real story. This is not a deep fake. This literally <laughs> happened. I watched Fast and Furious on a greyhound for the first time. So she's just, real things. This very fake stuff sprinkled this, in. This very sweet young woman wanted someone to watch Fast and Furious with. And I feel like it's let's kind of let's that's nice because you're community building, right? Yes. Let's, uh, let's jump to this story from the post millennial. We got big news, ladies and gentlemen. Late night shows go dark. Bins. As Writers Guild call strike. Well, I'm really excited for this because our viewership should go up. Because clearly the people who watch that show would love to watch this show. They're going to watch Freedom Tunes. I was around someone Freedom this Tunes. weekend who was like, oh, Tim Cast, that's on eight. Well, now that I'm not watching Tucker, I'll watch Tim Cast. Yes, Can yes, I ask but something? we're talking about Jimmy well, Kimmel and Colbert. What were Jimmy no, Kimmel's funny. writers doing a huge before wave. this strike? <laughs> <laughs> they're sitting in the back room and they're doing that thing that the Vice gag, covering their eyes and then grabbing a... <laughs> yeah. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah, dude. I mean, I got to say, when, when I saw Stephen Colbert do a song about vaccines and make fun of people who don't like the jab, I was like... He 
went there. He really but he wasn't there. Uh, he wasn't making his, fun of people who didn't like didn't, it. He did it more it than once. It was just the vax scene, and they and it wasn't one thing. Conservatives don't watch the show, and they thought Colbert did this one-time thing where everyone dressed up like syringes and danced. Mm -hmm. He did it every night. Yeah. He every no, night, that's why I'm he, making fun of him. I'm saying he's super lame. No, I'm saying I'm, I'm saying, saying it wasn't one lame. time. People think it was like this one thing. They show this one meme over and over. Again. I'm like, dude, he did that every night. <laughs> Every night he had the vax scene where he was telling people to get a medical treatment. And it's like, it's the weirdest thing. Could you imagine if, if all of a sudden every single late night host was like, have you tried Flabestro? <laughs> and you're like, why are you telling me to take a drug? And it's like, well, because we've all decided this pharmaceutical, just go to your doctor. The Flabestro don't, boys. Don't, don't go to Stephen Colbert to figure out whether or not you need medicine. Go to, why is it that Joe Rogan gets ragged on, but Colbert gets a free pass? Well, CNN you know I mean? edited Joe Rogan to look like the Incredible a, Hulk. They put, it, <laughs> they put a green filter it over It turns you green. The horse pace that makes you. That was weird, you. wasn't it? We yes. showed the videos and we were like. Oh, they were completely different. The man altered. looked like a smurf in all of the pictures. And they're like, we didn't edit this. Yeah. What do you mean you didn't edit it? That was crazy. He looked like, he looked like a normal man in the other ones. Maybe a little second in this, he's blue. He's blue. Like he's not now listen up to the story. It was, literally, it was on that level. Yeah. Yeah. Strike. That, that top one, that top left one. Look at that. That's so different. He looks Look like uh, one of those people who pretends to be a statue in cities. One on of those this is what he looked like on CNN. This is what he looked like on his actual Instagram. Does this mean that Trump is not as orange as people think he is? Oh he's not. My God. He's like, no, whoa, 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 are you kidding? What? The media absolutely was, in, was boosting saturation on Trump's pictures to make him look more orange. That's Please. a fact. Yeah, you, you you thought that was not, you didn't know, that? You know. I honestly now. never thought about yeah, it. Hannah it Claire. didn't really matter to me either way. Yeah, like let me, I, maybe I could pull that up too. <laughs> Wait, you're telling me Trump is not really orange? Well, I mean, Trump actually, is, Trump is when you go tan. to his rallies. Like, if you've ever been to a rally, he does not look nearly as orange as he does in all the pictures and videos. Well, this honestly, is I've disappointed. I'm I liked actually it better with the idea I like, that he was like, like really into self tan. I just like look at this. Look at here. Here you go. TV station editor sacked for making Trump appear more orange. No, no, <laughs> no, he's not really that orange. Oh, that does make me sad. That actually this, really makes me sad. Something, it right? was endearing. What I like that about him. his tongue. Other stuff what is that? that? <laughs> <laughs> that tongue thing? Dude, they definitely his made neck his, looks wider. Did his they make his mouth wider? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. His lips are th bulging. <laughs> <laughs> He's known for like having like the super. Dude, like, but think about this. Tiny they mouth, actually tiny did too. this on a TV show. And so there are regular people who are watching who don't know and they think <laughs> that is Trump. That's what they were doing. But there was a uh, uh, there was a whole bunch of pictures. Let me let me just Google well, search it. We don't. There have were a to whole bunch Biden. of pictures where they did this. That one made it look like he was wearing foundation. He's got the, the fake the fake tan for sure. But this is what the media would do. They would boost mm. saturation to make it look like he's more orange than he really is. They would do it all the time. They do it to Tim too. They make me look less orange. Mm -hmm. They're like, we can't let people know this actually. <laughs> no one knows his real power show? level. Was it uh, Isabel? Isabella Ryan Riley. Louis, she yeah. was like, I love being orange. I always wondered that was, that was like an ode That's to Trump. That's her whole thing. Is, yeah, it's like an ode to Trump. But That's now we thing. know. We tell her. She's, he's fake like, orange. You're actually more orange you than are Trump, the true Isabella. Orange I'm, I'm going to send her this clip afterwards and be like, well, you got to stop with the orange. It, it has happened more than once where there was something with the lighting or the camera where I was the only one on set who looked blue. And I have definitely gotten roasted by the Super Chats for being blue. And That's so funny. Tim basically did the same thing that CNN did to Joe Rogan to me. Well, Fake but, news, but, Tim. but we want that to do that shame. Like we, we, we want, no, I know. So did CNN. They we can't, to Joe Rogan. We can't have shameless looking handsome. You know what I mean? You, you need to have like a face. You do have to actively the camera. edit me out of being handsome. So yeah, we have a filter on James's oh, face all the time that makes him look the way he does. Otherwise, <laughs> I'm actually normally really attractive, <laughs> but this I only look like this on camera. That's actually the most time that they spend producing this is manipulating <laughs> his face so he's not so handsome. Exactly that and writing exactly. our scripts. That's yep. what we spend all our time doing. Well, no, we don't write the scripts. We, we read the scripts. Someone you guys don't write them. the scripts. No, the, the scripts are handed down from very important people That's that aren't true. supposed to be named. Mm -hmm. Don't ask any more questions about it. Man, that's crazy what they did to Joe Rogan. Yeah, that's on CNN. I know. It's not that crazy because we know how they are, but it is a little nuts. They tried making him look sickly like he had like some kind of what melanoma. It, he or looks something? it looks like the walking dead. He actually <laughs> he looks like a zombie. Of course. <laughs> Man. Uh, and they tried like to when you first they get try bit? to claim they didn't. Yeah, they said yeah. they didn't. Like, no, he just looks like that. And then people started coming out saying like, no, no, it's just different monitor settings. And I'm like, dude, I screenshotted the video on the same monitor and it looked different. Mm -hmm. 
Like CNN did some weird stuff. Yeah, CNN is the most honest news source in America. It like just seems so petty. It seems like if you were like talking to middle school girls and she's like, I'm purposely going to face tune this girl so she looks worse than I do. <laughs> like, but it's like, this is the exact same thing that they do with like these big articles and these big news sources when they do hit pieces is everyone sees the original piece and their viewers obviously aren't the highest IQ people. So they're like, oh, look at him. He's taking horse dewormer. He looks like crap. But then they never see Joe Rogan's statement after because he releases a statement mm -hmm. and they don't broadcast the statement. Mm -hmm. So it's like in their mind, that's just what he looks like. Yeah. I guess the good news is, though, they're, uh, uh, for the time being, we get some reprieve from the late night corporate press garbage. And I just love the fact that even Bill Maher is off the air. Mm. This is a writer's strike. Yeah. So what about the political opinions of John Oliver and Bill Maher? Are we not capable of hearing because they don't have writers? That just that shows interesting. it's everything I've been saying. Bill Maher does not read the news. Isn't it kind of funny that like, well, you know, all of the most prominent uh, left wing thinkers are going to be off the air for a little while. While Why? We ran out of clowns. You know, yeah, the jokers yeah. decided to stop writing. The people who write their words for them are striking. So now they have nothing to it's say. Not just like people, but the comedians, right? This is the thing. They don't make anything funny. Yeah. No, it's not funny. And I'm I, not saying none of them can be funny either. Colbert used to be funny. He really did. He's just not, he's not applying himself. I remember I watching Colbert when I was a kid and he was funny. Like yeah. I actually enjoyed tuning in. My parents would tune in and we would laugh. But now I've, it's just. Yeah, I've heard people say that this like format is pretty stale. People don't like it anymore. They're all sitting behind desks. They all do this opening monologue. It's all mm -hmm. kind of the same thing. So it makes me wonder that like with this writer strike, will they ever be able to recover any kind of viewership? Hopefully, I not. don't know what their numbers are like right now. But then also, what fills the vacuum? Like what takes the place? Tim all all they show. do, all they do, is ever since John Stewart is they whittled it down to saying something like Donald Trump today came out and did a backflip. That's kind of like a fat dog on Christmas. And then it like named Timothy. And then it shows like a dog. And then everyone laughs. <laughs> it's like it's really Saturday true. Night Live yeah. is just right. devolved. A weird you want a job it's like if a squirrel was riding a jet ski. <laughs> and then they, yeah. They Little Timothy over it's, here. It's, yeah. Cue the laugh track. And then, he goes, current and then he goes, look at that. Look at that squirrel. He really loves it. And then he keeps leaning into the Photoshop and. Is a Some, there, there's a meme writing. that breaks down John Oliver's whole show mm -hmm. and it was like the whole thing is a single formula it's an ad lib where they would take the same script and pull out proper nouns and then put in different proper nouns and it like doesn't miss a beat wow and, and to the point where he said it's little Timothy like a whole bunch of times little Timothy over here like referencing a child and then saying it's 2016 people no. like it's current year why is this happening but it was it's all the same thing and they mention that he'll pause the audience will laugh and that was like reinforcing, you must believe this. This is what everyone agrees with. Laugh with this. Mm -hmm. Well, psychologically, that's that's a whole reason laugh tracks were created. Like, have you ever watched, Like, the, I don't think the Big Bang Theory is funny, but a lot of people love it. Super the Big funny. Bang Theory, they have clips without the laugh oh, yeah. tracks. You're just watching, you're like, none of this it's is disturbing. funny at all. But well, the laugh track cues that psychological aspect, and you oh, yeah, it's funny. And initially, they did have live studio audiences, and I'm not sure if it was this way from the get-go, but eventually, even with those audiences, they started telling them, you have to laugh right now. You're mm -hmm. supposed to laugh at the joke. Hold up and, the and, sign. And, and, and they, they'd have Jeb Bush, they're going, please clap. You know, they were telling <laughs> people, you have to find this funny. How do they get people for the audiences, I, I wonder? You know, I know, I know they that have to hire them too. Maybe that's what really happened. The audience really went on strike. <laughs> like I <laughs> can't Phillips watch. Strike. I'm not watching another vaccine. You're song, making my Steven. ears bleed. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you walk around New York, they'll come up to you and be like, "Hey, you want to watch a free comedy show?" And you don't know what it is. And then like, you walk and you're like, "Ah, oh, it's a cold oh, bear. It's a cold bear. They got me. I'm stuck. Well, can't leave. You know, I think they lock the doors. <laughs> there's this weird thing that happens where conservatives worship any liberal who isn't as crazy as the rest of the liberals. Mm -hmm. So I want to make it very clear I'm not engaging in that when I say anything remotely positive about Jon Stewart. I think he's caused many serious issues. Not a huge fan. However, I will say that he was funny compared to these guys. He really was. I just, I just figured it out. What? Why don't we just get like 500 moderate to conservative types to go to the Jimmy Kimmel audience boo. <laughs> and boo it all. Tim. Because he's going to be like, so we got this crazy video about Donald Trump. And then it's Trump being like, we should lower taxes. And then, oh, yeah. everyone, and then everyone starts cheering. No, that, that's when you cheer. <laughs> and then when he's like, but Trump, of course, is a is a criminal. Boo. Wait, what? You're booing me? It's applause. I've, what would they do? Would they, would they cancel the show and kick everybody out? I've got a really good idea. Most likely. We'll do, we'll replace these late night shows. We'll do a late night show with me. The live studio audience will be the chickens from Chicken City. And they'll, they'll balk and cluck and make all their various chicken noises. And that's how the audience will know it's funny. To touch on what you said earlier about conservatives, like almost worshiping or like 
looking up to the people that are more lefty that yeah. aren't as crazy. They have this problem with you know, celebrities, athletes, we have this problem all throughout the industry is like when one person that literally hates you and everything you stand <laughs> exactly. for, they say one thing that you kind of agree with, you put them on a pedestal for like a like, week straight burst. and it's just like trending Twitter clip after trending Twitter clip. It's like they literally hate you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but that's how I felt about when Shia LaBeouf was uh, doing that movie. I don't remember. Yeah. I don't Say remember what God is Lord. He, no, yeah. I, thought that, I thought that was based. He became Catholic. Okay, I but like, did he actually? Shia. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and tell you whether he was sincere or not. That's up. That's not up to me. But it was like all the rage for a minute for to be like, we're so happy. Mm -hmm. He's one of us. He's one of us. Never mind anything else that's going on or if he sticks with it. Oh, he can't repent. I'm sure he could. But did he? I, I hope so. I, I mean, I Joe Biden he says he's Catholic too, right? Yeah, but here's the thing. Joe Biden explicitly does things in public that tell us otherwise. And he, he openly defies church teaching. Joe didn't, Biden has didn't literally Shia said LaBeouf, children should transition. Uh, get over, because I think he was addicted to something for quite a mm -hmm. while. Mm -hmm. And then he came through He's that. He's had like all Yeah, like a bunch of, of problems. Issues. And then he went to rehab and actually like put his life on a better track, and then that Catholic thing happened from what I'm aware of. Yeah, Joe Biden said he was Catholic and his life just went on a way worse track. <laughs> I'm Catholic, his but whole life. I'm, yeah, exactly. abort your babies, but, please. Yeah, exactly. I'm Catholic, but I don't believe in the Catholic Church. You're like, Wait a minute. How does that work? That's called not being Catholic. <laughs> Let's jump to a very uh, serious news story. We got this one from TimCast.com. Biden administration sending 1,500 troops to southern border. U.S. officials are expecting a surge of more than 35,000 migrants flooding through El Paso after Title 42 ends. I guess my question for these so-called writers at TimCast.com is, <laughs> are these illegal immigrants they're expecting or just general migrants? Because if it's like people lining up at the border being like, hello, I'd like to fill out forms to peacefully enter this country. I don't know if we need... 1,500 troops. This is the most like actual action that you've seen the Biden administration take with, you know, securing the border as well. So it's interesting that they decided to do it now, right before election season. I feel like that might have something to do with it. Well, didn't Corinne oh, Jean-Pierre just, just get roasted be... for saying it's 90% yeah. down? Border crossings are down 90%. Like, it's like all the no journalists on the border. because they're all already here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> but, but is it what they're saying? They're going to be sending people back? Is that why they need the troops? I think it was just, uh, I think they stopped Venezuelans, if I remember correctly. It was Venezuela or a different country for a minute. And there was like a big blockade. And I think it was in the same area as well outside of El Paso, mm -hmm. where you just had like Venezuelans piking tents and there was thousands of them. Yeah. And then finally, they just allowed them to come in from one way of. You want to know what was hilarious? Lori Lightfoot started complaining to Greg Abbott about all of the immigrants that have been sent up to Chicago. Mm -hmm. That's the least of your worries. Mm -hmm. That yeah. she busted them the into the, the conservative suburbs overnight. She did do that a mm -hmm. while back. Yes, she did. She sent them out to the, the different conservative suburban areas. But I, I love how as soon as their ideology comes into contact with reality, they recognize, okay, I have to either completely abandon my principles or the thing I'm in charge of is going to fail. Yeah. I mean... We've known for a while that with the end of Title 42, you would get different migrant caravans mm -hmm. coming up. And again, I have no reason to assume everyone is going to attempt to cross illegally, but just the numbers bear out that many people will attempt to cross illegally into the country. And without Title 42, it becomes much more difficult to expel illegal immigrants. Uh, we've already had a crisis at the southern border for so yeah. long. And the Biden administration has done nothing to really address this. I mean, there have been efforts to uh, get Mayorkas removed from office. You know, really, remember, Kamala Harris is the is the bo border Borders czar. Are. She's doing a great mm -hmm. job. So I think the challenge is, like, as we go through the era, we wanted COVID regulations to end. And that was how we got Title 42. But if Title 42 is coming to an end, or if COVID regulations are coming to an end, so does Title 42. So mm. how do we address the border? Yeah. Well, there, there was an interesting question asked earlier. Are these people coming legally or not? Why is the military there? I don't think we're at any risk of not admitting enough people into the United States at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we've had quite a bit of immigration that was completely undocumented, totally illegal. Mm -hmm. The government had no oversight over it. So this is the least they can do. Yeah, I mean, the it's least also, they can do. it's not just the southern border. It's also all of the Haitian mm -hmm. and Cuban immigrants coming in through Florida. Like their illegal immigration is also up along Canada. Mm -hmm. And that's people flying from other countries to Canada to enter the US. I mean, well, this is an issue that we just 
for whatever reason, cannot man up and solve. Well, and it's getting to the point too, like whenever I do border reporting or some of my fellow journalists are down there, you're not encountering people from Mexico anymore. You're not encountering people from those areas. You're encountering Cubans. You're Now it's Chinese nationals that are mm -hmm. coming over yeah. and in droves. So we've gotten to the point of where all the Mexicans have already came over, right? Mexico isn't really even an immigration point anymore. Yeah, they come up through it, but it's Venezuelans, it's Cubans, and every single like few months, I'll go down to the border whenever I have the chance. Different kinds of migrants every single time. Yep. It's just evolving, and more and more people are coming over, and so there's no need for certain individuals to come over because they're already here. I mean, do you remember that story about there's photos of uh, Haitian migrants who were collected under a bridge in that Texas? That was crazy. Yeah. And there was the famous yeah. photograph of you know the Border Patrol agent on uh, yeah, on whipping them, right? And New York yeah. has condemned them, and it turned out that was completely a lie, mm -hmm. and he has never well, done the it. the media, it, it wasn't even made worse. And then after that, the media ran with it mm -hmm. for like two months. And yeah. then you had the pictures being spread by all the left wing, uh, you know, publicists, right. of them whipping them. And it's like, Which that's literally what was happening. the most humane way to control them so they don't die in that river while they're crossing. Right. And all, I bet if you asked anyone on the street if they remembered this incident, they would all think it was someone from Mexico crossing into the U.S. Mm -hmm. And that's well, just not it. Like people don't understand the border crisis because we've let it get out of control. And instead of treating it like the national security and humanitarian issue that it is, mm -hmm. right? We just say, if you don't want people here, you must be bigoted and racist and bad. Yeah, well, Ooh. and after that report went viral too, all of a sudden, all of the migrants were gone. Like the next two days, mm -hmm. they all of a sudden were gone. Where do you think they went? They brought them into our country. Well, fundamentally, right, there's two basic positions on this, one of which is completely new and would be foreign to the thought of any pragmatic or remotely reasonable political thinker for all of history who wasn't trying to destroy a country, okay? In the first stream of thought, the first principle or whatever we want to call it, desire is, I think that the government should have some oversight over who enters this country and some control over who is crossing over the border because if we don't have that, there's literally no purpose to having a border in the first place. The second stream of thought is that's mean. And that's it. And there's no counterpoint to it. And there's no counterpoint to it. It's if you think the government should literally do anything, have any kind of immigration oversight at all, it's because you're racist. Mm -hmm. Then you look at all the great nations that actually have low crime rates and are actually succeeding with their economies. They all have strong borders. It's almost like there's a correlation between a real nation kind of and a faux nation. Mm -hmm. Weird. The, the thing you're not considering, Seamus, mm -hmm. is that, you know, but what if you're mean? The thing that you're not considering is here's the cartoon of you <laughs> farting with <laughs> stink lines. Really, me, How long have you had yeah. that ready to you, go? What did you just do? How did you? Look at that. That's you. That's literally what you look like, bro. Did you consider that? You made me look very thin. That's, well, sh you know. It's, Thank you, Seamus. You're welcome. <laughs> you, if you That's consider, the nicest if thing you you've ever had done. If you consider that a flattering caricature. Yeah. Who, should we send this to somebody? Seamus. I, I sent it to you. you should, should, <laughs> You're going to give away it. original art from Seamus? You're going to raffle it off? Yeah, yeah we're going to. you we, got to frame it and put behind you now. We send out random uh, knickknacks from the show to our members. Based? Yeah. Yeah, so you if have you to sign it, and then we can send it out. Here, yeah, so I'll leave, put, I'll leave a pack my of John Zen. Hancock you can on send that. it to a lucky guy. It'd be funny. <laughs> that's a really big jug of water next to me. That's what it. That's the size of it. That's why you're so gassy. Is it? Is water? Water. <laughs> we were supposed, water. Are you talking about? We were supposed to be talking about the merits of being mean to migrants, Seamus, but you had to go and change the subject. Well, no, you disagreed with me, and so I had to own you with facts and logic. Farting. You tried debating me. You suggested I was mean, and so to prove you wrong, I showed you a picture I drew of you farting with zinc lines. <laughs> that's the kindest thing he's ever done. Yeah, wow, right. very important news we just we discussed here on some guest. <laughs> as 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 we were saying, no, I guess you are just mean, right? But that's that. Th those are those are literally the two options. Are we happy with Joe Biden? Oh yeah, absolutely. No, Best I mean, like, let me hold on. Let me show you this picture from. <laughs> <laughs> I drew this other one. I mean, like this action he's taking right now, sending troops down to the border. Should we be like, that's a good thing? Please do it more. I think it's a start. Yeah, but that's it. It's just a start. It's something that should have happened right as he got in office. He shouldn't have repealed any of the immigration plans that Trump had because they were working. And now that he's doing that, he's got to backpedal because even normal Americans are starting to see, OK, this is kind of weird that we're allowing anybody and everybody through. So I think this is their way of almost compensating right before mm -hmm. election season, saying, hey, we understand your problems, conservatives, not you MAGA terrorists, though, because we don't like you guys, but general conservatives and progressives. We know you want to secure borders. So this is our way of giving it to you. I think it's just to buy election points. Do you yeah. remember his first State of the Union address where he just started appropriating Trump's talking points? He did. And said yeah. that we need to secure the border. I mean, 
when your agenda and he, involves and he's like, capitalism, this, he's like, capitalism are good, man. Defend the police. Don't defend them. He did. Well, he did say <laughs> that. He literally said those words, except he's, he, he was less articulate than that and more yeah, slurry. Like a, and, and, burr, burr, burr. That's, that's my favorite narrative. Have you seen videos of him speaking right. like in Congress, you know, clips of him on any kind of committee over his very long career? When he, when he was capable? It's crazy. I just hope Completely that's what we It sounds like this. Look, if we're going to have a new policy here, you got to listen up. We got to have better taxes. We got to we gotta have lower taxes in this country. And now he's like, <laughs> and the slurring and like getting lost. Yes. Like, it's rough. I, I think the problem with this action, I, I won't say problem. I think it's good. The border needs more support, especially all the agents there. It's just that they created a problem because they tried to walk back all of Trump's immigration, like any kind of thing that could help stop this crisis because again remember people migrating here go through terrible things like it is not the worst things. it is not mm -hmm. an acceptable thing to put anyone through yeah. it's not good for america and it's not good through uh, the women and children and men who go through it so why we would support it i don't understand i think it's a it's it's okay but like you're saying it feels like cheap mm -hmm. uh, cheap uh points before the election and you know, if he gets enough pushback, I'm sure they'll pull the troops back. Well, and the thing I is, think is they are not really committed to solving this problem. No, of course they never not. will be. Well, and with the troops, too, is like we saw this down at like Eagle Pass and other points that are really hot right now is whenever I go down there, if you do have National Guard troops, you do have any of these troops, they quite literally all their job is to do is to facilitate the migrants crossing. So they're just helping them cross. They're not stopping them. They have absolutely no power. They're still under akin to Border Patrol. And, and when I was down there last time at Eagle Pass, they were quite literally intentionally pulling their Humvees up in front of these migrants so mm -hmm. I couldn't do my job and take videos of the processing. So it's like... Where is this going to go? It's going to go absolutely nowhere. They have no authority to engage with cartels. I've heard horror stories of them watching literally people shoot children across just across the river. They can't do anything. The child crawls over and then they give the kid aid or, you know, they're they're dumping people into vats of acid, these cartels and facilitating all these migrant caravans that are coming over. Right. But the National Guard can't do anything. So what are they there for? It's worthless. I mean, think was it DeSantis who said like, he instituted the policy of like if you arrive on a boat we will turn you away you mm -hmm. can't and it's it's to deter people from taking an extremely dangerous journey to try and illegally enter the country yep. well, and right? then it, it's sad because then it forces as well there's a downside for them to be facilitated through the cartels and that's when the worst possible things actually happen to them that's when you get the rape trees that's when you get the murders that's when you get the torture is when these cartels are put in charge they're multi-billion dollar industries mm -hmm. that are i would argue more powerful than a lot of uh, more powerful right. than a lot of world governments I and you're giving them more power. Exactly. I think about when I was uh, going to college and I went to school in Texas, uh, they were talking about someone who volunteered with, I can't remember the name of the organization, but they basically were like, oh, we go to the border, we hand out water bottles and we try probably, to help people. Probably one of those Catholic organizations that facilitate I'm everything. not going to run into the Catholic conversation. <laughs> you but, better not. <laughs> but I will say. Shia LaBeouf was there. Stan, <laughs> oh, yes. The true, she says, do it. Do why, it. Why, do why, it. Can't, why can't <laughs> he be sincere? Uh, I hope he is, but okay. I, you know. Uh. Let's see. I haven't heard about it since. The thing is, like any of these organizations, you are actually encouraging people to risk their lives to do something dangerous and illegal that we know ultimately harms everyone involved. I think this is the craziest thing that we hear out of the left, that we should not build a, a, a border wall because it's what? No me? humans illegal. Like, I, I yeah. just don't understand. Why would you want to put people into the positions that they are in? Well, they're criminals. They're criminal, criminal immigrants. Exactly. I don't, I don't, I don't like the They are breaking the no law when they illegal. come to our country. No, I don't like the phrase illegal immigrant. No human is I'm illegal. I'm like, what, is it, what does it even mean? Illegal immigrant? Like the person's illegal? No, no, they're criminal immigrants. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that, that term would make more sense. But yeah. now, I mean, you know, whether criminal immigrants or anything, they're committing crimes when crossing into the country. But there is no such thing as a legal process or an illegal process anymore. You can be a godaway. You can come and get your papers for the Border Patrol, and then they'll just release you. Mm -hmm. So anyone can come through. I mean, terrorists, quite literally, anybody can enter our country, and we're not doing anything I've about known it. people who uh, grew up in Eastern Europe who are advised, you know, it's actually it's actually more likely that if you enter illegally through the southern border, you are you are more likely to be able to stay in America mm -hmm. than if you go through yep. the application process. That's how Luke like, got here. Probably. <laughs> uh, no, I just feel like that's the most sickening thing. It's it's similar, and I this is a broad comparison to draw, but uh, the conversations we have about gun ownership, right? Like, if you ban guns, only law-abiding people suffer. Yep. People who do not care about your law Laws, don't care about your laws they're not going to uh register their guns or give you the guns or do anything you ask them to do it's only the people who believe in law and order and want to positively you know c constructively follow the law i thought it was funny the last time i was down at the border because i went into mexico and coming back in i had the idea i was like i wonder if 
I drop my ID or give my ID to one of these other reporters I'm with and cross the Rio Grande because I've done it before and get processed as an illegal immigrant, act like I don't speak English. Like, what would the process look like? You then I found out it. I was going to. I probably have the plan to. It's a felony. But uh, but that's I the only that, that was the only downside to it. Don't do it. I was just like, kidding. you're going to charge me. <gasps> but and then I came through the legal way and then I got detained for over six hours because I was on this terrorist watch list for my reporting on January 6th. Oh, wow. And then they treated me worse than the actual illegal immigrants that are coming through. I'm like, I'm an American citizen and you have people walking across the river and then being released into America in less time that's, that's than the, I That's am. The, the Gulag uh, uh, Archipel mm -hmm. Archipelago, Archipelago yeah. saying that uh, for criminals, it's just their nature. What can you do? Right? Yes. But for you, you knew You knew better. better. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're a bad man. That's exactly it. Right, we, we have to go after the people. Whenever someone commits a crime, it's because of their socioeconomic environment, the way that they were raised. They would not have ever done anything wrong. They're if just they stealing were bread. More. Exactly. And then when you do something wrong, it's just because you're evil and bad and you're a despicable, disgusting enemy of the state. Well, we and got speaking of doing things bad, uh, in a very childish move, Tim tried to edit my drawing of him. It's not nearly as good. He put it's me so in the good. back. He put me in the background sniffing the fart. <laughs> I found I think it's really immature. And he's saying mm, farts. Yeah, which I have, which I do. will say. Uh, if if I smell a good one, sometimes I feel uh, like I'm in a fifth grade. But classroom. I never smell a good one. Bazinga! Oh. Back to yeah, that's right. This oh. is I. Can we just appreciate that my art's been ruined? Ruined. It's been vastly improved. It's been now. ruined. <laughs> I wonder if that you can even see. Are you able to see that? Can you launch a poll? Did this did this Was ruin this or ruin Seamus, Seamus, Seamus is just standing there going mmm farts. You just, I would say it's like you destroyed something Picasso made, but Picasso didn't really make all that much that was good. Uh, remember, remember that story about hot what was it, Salvador around. Dali? He like bought dinner at a restaurant and then he drew a doodle and a napkin, signed it and paid for his meal with that. And they were I like- I thought there was a story of him, someone coming up to him being like, draw me something. And he does. And he's like, okay, pay me a thousand dollars. She's like, what? But I thought you were just doing it for huh. free. And he's like, no, this is my craft. It's taken uh, me a long time. Oh yeah. They, they said you did that in 10 seconds. And he said, no, it took me years to learn how to do it. It's like, mm -hmm. then why did you do it so badly, Picasso? He was very talented. <laughs> he was really good at it. And he started doing this abstract garbage. Yeah, like his original sound, paintings. Were his really original paintings like were really good, and then he just started making trash, and everyone went, "That's so good because he's portraying the world other than it actually is." And I don't want to see the world as it is because that makes it more difficult for me to live a vicious life. I feel like you sound like his disappointed parents. We sent you to art That's school right. for this. You <laughs> had so much promise. First of all, this? if he went to art school, his parents were already disappointed. Okay. <laughs> Are you speaking? From I, I can make experience? an art school joke right now, but I won't. Did you, guys, right, let's, did you let's, go to let's, art school? Let's jump to the story. We got a we got a story from the post millennial. Antifa member sentenced to 60 months probation for May 2021 Portland riot. That's it? arson? Probation. Hold on, hold on. Can you go up? He was charged with arson? Yeah, he was uh, Jared Bailey Huber pleaded guilty to one count of arson in the second degree. One count of criminal mischief in the first degree and one count of riot. And he got 60 months probation. Somebody check on so every not, single January 6th defendant right now. Yeah. They're not, not locking him up. They're like, all right, we'll just call us and let us know. You're just a warning. They're, they're, you, you just set buildings on fire. He was just expressing you know himself. Many, he, exactly. He's, <laughs> he's a creative kid. It's free speech. It's, it was self-defense. You know what's... <laughs> he had to set the building up. You guys know, like, that famous graphic that goes around of all, like, what Antifa looks like, right? And, like, yeah. the, and it's just, like, the ugliest of them all. <laughs> it's funny, because that night, that graphic, I'm the one person that was left out of that graphic. Because that night, I was arrested with them, because I was in Black Block recording on the ground. Spent a whole night in jail with them. But then I never have seen me on the graphic. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I was like, but all the were. people that were on the graphic, I was sitting in jail with alongside all night talking to I was on the graphic because they edited me to look less handsome. I was like, going to say, are you guys just telling us you're handsome? I don't understand. <laughs> I mean, but this, now, hold on, hold on. Here's, hold on. Here's the inverse. We have a story from the Daily Mail. New York City mother of three who slammed into BLM protesters after they terrorized her finally accepts plea deal. She, will, she was sentenced to five hours of community service instead of six days, which she was offered, but she was facing seven years. So this is a video where... They surround her vehicle. She's with her 29-year-old daughter. They're screaming and banging. And then she hits the gas and just boom. And these people go flying. She already nope. did her community service. Nobody got any serious, <laughs> serious injuries. But she hasn't done it yet. She has to do five hours. And then if she does, she will be able to, uh, uh, that's it. She's out. So the issue here is it's kind of good news. The better news would have been that she was not convicted exactly. at all. Because she Dropped. was attacked yep. and she was panicking trying to hurt but, her kids but she said that she accidentally hit the gas in a panic and that she didn't mean to hurt anybody and that's why they said okay fine we'll give you uh, five hours community service but this is good news because this woman was originally facing seven years it was a big deal we were like this is crazy they surround your vehicle this was several months after in provo utah they shot a driver 
Mm-hmm. That's the, uh, John Sullivan, same guy that was there on January 6th in the room alongside me with Ashley Babbitt. That was his group, Insurgents USA. In, in, in Provo? Provo, Utah. Wow. Yep. He was actually arrested during that same day uh, during that protest. So it goes back far. But another thing that hasn't hit the news yet that actually I think will be good news regarding Antifa, kind of inverse to the Portland one, is last week in Texas, outside of one of these Fort Worth drag shows, um, you know, Antifa decided to go up to a Catholic group and mace them while they were praying on their rosaries. And it was all wow. caught on security camera. The cops went and arrested him while he was there. And then in response, the leader of the group, uh, Christopher Gullett, leader of John Brown Gun Club, um, you know, he went and he decided he would assault a police officer while uh, armed with a firearm. And then same with one of their medics decided wow. to assault a police officer. When was this? This was last week. And oh, wow. it, it didn't really get a lot of attention in the news. It got a little bit, you know, Andy No put it out because that's his thing. Um, and, you know, there, I think they are going to face felony charges. I don't see how you can assault a police officer in the state of Texas while you're armed. I and not Where safe. in Texas was it? It was in Fort Worth. We'll which, see. Yeah, well, we'll see. I mean, Fort Worth PD, though, it was crazy to see that response because, you know, I've seen them be violent in Dallas. I've seen them be violent all around Texas and to do things that would warrant arrest. But the cops never do anything regarding the drag shows and regarding Antifa. This was the first time that I've actually seen a police force actually do something and use some force. Do you feel like they're becoming more confident? I felt like for a while people didn't know how to react to Antifa because they are. They're becoming more. That's why they're becoming violent. I think is it's getting close to election season. Things are heating up. I mean, I'm on lists. I can't even go into these shows anymore because they specifically stand armed outside these events because of my coverage now. So usually I have to send somebody or go in a really good disguise or find one that wow. they're distracted here. So I got to go do this other one in a different part of town. Wow. Um, but they're becoming more violent, and that's how it always is. Is as you get closer to the summer. That's when violence really occurs yeah. during the summer. Well, it is, it's, it's, coming. it's just insane, mm-hmm. right? So this person, this dude burns down a building, doesn't see any prison time. Thankfully, this woman didn't get in trouble for defending herself and her children. I know she said she accidentally hit the gas, but when people surround your car after someone was already shot who was in their car, after, I mean, look, uh, granted, it was a few decades ago, but what was it, Rodney King? During the Rodney King riots, that trucker was bold, pulled out of his truck and, and beaten. beaten, and beaten yep. Just severely beaten. These kinds of things happen. When a mob surrounds your car, that's extremely dangerous. And why should you be forced to risk your children's life by sitting there while these people are terrorizing it's you? absurd. There was a yeah. video out of Chicago of that where they surrounded a guy's car and dragged him out and started mm-hmm. beating him. Mm-hmm. And that you're, and that's that's the thing. You're supposed to let that happen because when somebody gets beaten or killed by the mob, it's not a news story. But when they defend themselves, it's a national trial. Hey, they're good kids, man. They're just misunderstood. Okay, mm-hmm. just you know, a mostly peaceful beating. That's what I experienced. Remember that story Poland. about the uh, the subway vigilante in New York? I think that was before my time. Yeah, but it was like crime was really bad in the '80s, and then some. He dude, had a gun. Yeah, and he shot mm-hmm. some like dudes who said were robbing him, and then they claimed they weren't robbing him, but everybody cheered for him. And the anyway. guy was paralyzed, right? I don't know. I, don't, I, I that was well before my time. I don't. Remember. I mean, that's that's the thing though. Is I think as like you know, in places like New York and in these high crime areas, is you're going to start, especially during 2024 and election season, as things heat up, you're going to see some vigilantism. Like, yeah, you're going to see people carrying out what the police are supposed to be. They're going to be the ones, you know, handing the pain down to Antifa and to these other radical groups that are trying to quite literally kill these people. And it's just going to get worse and worse because when the cops aren't going to do their job and the DAs are not going to prosecute. Who else has to do it? Yeah. I mean, you're going to get more Kyle Rittenhouse situations as well. And looking at this, contrast 60 months probation, I mean, being serious against the felonies that people who entered the Capitol have been charged Mm -hmm. with, right? Like there is an obvious bias. So you can't even trust that if someone is arrested for, you know, violently burning down your business, that they are actually going to serve an adequate punishment. Uh, I think that would be it only encourage our low trust society to start to tear apart. Yep. Oh, well, also, I think I'm that's sorry. The point. I don't know why it it's the case that arson just isn't a big deal to people anymore. Burning down a building to go to jail for less than a decade for something like that is absurd. Do you know how many people you can kill? Mm hmm. Just the completely reckless abandon, the lack of consideration for human life. You're a danger to society if you do something like that. It's not even just a question of whether you need to be punished. It's whether you should be allowed outside. Yeah. And the answer is no, you shouldn't be. That person should be locked up for decades. Well, well I you bet you burnt could... a building down. Right. In a city where it could have spread to any number exactly. of people. Exactly. I mean, it's out of control. I also think if we looked up any other arson, you would find that they get much more time. It's because of the affiliation with the, the summer of peace or whatever Mm -hmm. we call it uh and antifa that this person is getting special treatment like they are rewarding someone who intentionally tried to 
basically hurt other mm-hmm. people. Well, I mean, exactly. The, well, there, there's there's uh, a point to be made here about what's called moral luck. So if this person had set this building on fire and there had been 10 people inside who died, they wouldn't be a different kind of person yep. than this individual was. Their moral character would be identical. They just happened to get lucky in the sense, or maybe unlucky from their perspective, that no one was in there Mm -hmm. for them to be able to kill with their arson. Mm -hmm. But what they did is absolutely not different at all. They just happen to have the fortunate legal outcome for themselves that nobody died. I mean, I remember in 2020, uh, one of the first times I was on the ground in Portland, it was night 100. Um, An Antifa member decided they wanted to throw a Molotov cocktail. It was insane within the first five minutes of them marching and they threw it at the police they missed hit their own guy and lit him on fire and that's where like the pants on fire clip came from oh yeah yeah and you know went way viral trump retweeted it and then all of a sudden no charges he hit his own guy but he was trying to kill police officers the police officers literally had to walk over and put him out but Nobody else was doing it. They were trying to hit him with a duct tape shield. It's like, yeah, that's great. That's going to put him out. But there's no repercussions of that. Like, he tried to kill multiple police officers, and I never saw any charges from that. They never knew who he was. Exactly. So what's happened right now is the state is not merely failing to uphold civility. It is actively Mm anti-civil. When somebody tries to protect themselves or their property or someone else, they end up getting locked up. Mm -hmm. But when somebody goes out and they destroy things, they either don't get locked up or they get a slap on the wrist because that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to go out and destroy things. That's the current paradigm. Right. And I I can't imagine, you know, the stories out of Portland, right? Like Portland is a liberal city. At some point, don't the residents there start saying like, this is not working for us. I mean, businesses have already basically completely moved out of Mm -hmm. Portland. I know some business owners there that they have lost literally their livelihoods because of these riots in 2020 and they don't know what to do. Nobody wants to open new businesses there. You still go to Portland. There's hardly anywhere to eat anymore. Everything is still shut down basically Mm -hmm. completely. Like that is my least favorite place to go. One, because the energy in the air, you can feel that there's something inherently Mm. wrong and demonic going on there but two you can't get any food and if you do it's like 90 bucks for something super small and it's only takeout non-contactless i thought insurance would pay for it crazy that's what we're told right because did you know that that insurance because insurance exists you can destroy anything you want for any reason and no one's harmed in in actuality the insurance have caps Exactly. So, People will go into debt just cleaning up the wreckage of their business what, before they even start rebuilding it. What happened in Minnesota was that they nobody could get paid out, so the buildings just were destroyed. I mean, you've forever. seen the before and after pictures. Yeah. It's apocalyptic. And this is the thing. It's not just that the buildings are destroyed and gone forever. The business owner has to pay to clean the rubble up. Right. So not only is their business destroyed, now whatever savings they had, if they had any, are going to be wiped out trying to clean the property, trying to get all the rubble off of it because you're not allowed to just leave a half-burnt building standing. There is there is, there is evil infest, infested in, in our government. Like you mm-hmm. mentioned, the cops shake you down at the border. Yep. Like those are evil people. It's anti-civility. Yeah. They actively work against civil society. They're not just They're failing to, to do their it. duty. They're working in the opposite direction. They want to destroy it. Well, it's the same thing with the the cops that don't want to enforce, you know, these uh, these drag shows. They don't want to go in and arrest anybody because, oh, it's going to look bad on social media or we might get fired from our jobs. It's like that is literally your job. There are la- laws being broken. There's when there's sexual you know what's exploitation look bad on, judgment on when, day? When, yeah. when there's children there. Yeah. Because what the left keeps trying to say is that the right is banning drag shows. And then they come out like Kevin Bacon saying, hey, drag's fine. It's like nobody cares about drag. They care about them having burlesque shows for children. Mm-hmm. That's not appropriate. Exactly. I mean, it's crazy that we even have to say that. Like, I just came out with that piece that you guys published. Thank you, Tim. I appreciate it. Um, And Chris, if you're watching, Chris Bertman, you're awesome. Um, I did like an in-depth piece of my last year of reporting on these drag shows. Not a single time was anyone arrested in any correlation to all the sexual exploitation that happened. Let's let's jump to this story from the Daily Mail. Check this out. San Francisco Whole Foods made more than 560 emergency calls over 13 months after rampant drug use in the restrooms, people defecating on the floor, and violence towards staff, and theft of all all 250 shopping baskets were stolen. All of them. (laughs) That's impressive. Who lives in this place? That's, yeah. So, um... 
It's, it's interesting you, because, you, no, not me, of course not. Well, I know that in California, right, if it's under $1,000 worth of merchandise, you can't That's call right. the police to be arrested. Yeah. But this is Whole Foods, so if someone That's steals like a celery things. stick, <laughs> you can call You're the police. There. That's why they made all these reports. I mean, San Francisco is where the targets are locking everything up. It's where all the Walgreens and CVSs mm -hmm. are closing. This is not, it's exactly what you're talking about in Portland. This is not a sustainable city for businesses. And when the businesses leave, everything else will collapse along with it. Well, in ideologues want this because they believe they're going to be able to create something new from the ashes of what we they're actively how working to destroy. Out. Ideologues also aren't capable of seeing flaws in their worldview when they manifest themselves in the real world oftentimes. But it's so disheartening how your average person is struggling to see some of this. I mean, just your average liberal. How can you vote for the party that turns Chicago into Chicago, that turns New York into New York, that turns San Francisco into what San Francisco is, right. that has kept Detroit like Detroit? How could you vote for them? What do you want America to be more like? Do you want America to be more like Texas, like Florida, like all of the places people are leaving your states to go to? Right. Mm -hmm. Or do you want America to be more like the states that these this party has ruined? I mean, do you feel like the youngest generation or maybe, you know, whatever generation is old enough to run for mayors of cities are producing another uh, Rudy Giuliani, so to speak, mm -hmm. like someone who is willing maybe. to address the challenges? Or do we feel like we have uh, lost the era of a conservative mayor in a major metropolitan area? It, look, it's possible for there to be some kind of political backlash in those areas. I could see it happening, but who knows? It might, they might be too far gone. I'm kind of excited. <laughs> you know, because it's just like you know why Tim? Tim, he's like civil yeah. war. Yeah, that's right there. That's cool. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about these people voted for it. They got exactly what they wanted, and I I'm happy for them. I'm like, this is fantastic. We now get to see what happens under Democrat policy, mm -hmm. and then let the experiment play out. And you know what? Maybe this is the molting phase, and all of these policies result in utopia. Yeah. Not exactly. Or it's, 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 it all yeah, just right. literally burns to the ground because Antifa's firebombing these buildings and yeah. we've left a long time ago. See, so, I don't think, I think the division has reached such a point like, you know, right versus left ideologically wise is it doesn't matter what policies are pushed through for the left or how many cities get burned down, how many businesses shut down, how bad the economy is. They're going to keep voting the same way because it's us versus them. They're the racists. They're this. They're that. And the us versus them politics has just reached a point. It's like the Harry Sisson kid, right? That's been going viral recently that the right's kind of been elevating. Is like that shill. He literally does not care and doesn't really know what the effect policies has. He knows that it's not good and that Republican policies are better. But he doesn't no, care. No, no, no. I don't think he knows anything. I think he just knows that it's making him famous. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's making him money, he's, too. He's, he's getting paid. Well, also, you have to consider that people who vote Democrat are notoriously low-information voters. It's not to say you don't have any people who have a lot of information who vote Democrat. And it's not to say you don't have any people who are low-information and vote Republican. But Democrats know that the more low-information people vote, the better off their political party is going to be. Right. Which is why you always see these get-out-and-vote ad campaigns where they have some celebrity who's almost always a Democrat mm -hmm. yeah. stand in front of a camera and tell television audiences that they need to go fulfill their civic duty and vote now why would you want people who only vote because a celebrity tells them to to vote because That's you need people who have no idea what they're talking about out there voting yeah, exactly. no idea what they're voting on everyone wants to talk all day long about your civic duty to participate in the electoral process no one ever talks about the civic duty to know about the issues that right. you're voting on right. why is it better to have people who haven't researched any of this in voting booths how on earth could you make that argument unless you were doing so cynically because you know that those people will vote for your political party because low information people always do? I think it's the most discouraging thing ever to understand that these kinds of people that are very low information and just vote because they see a celebrity on TV and it tells them to do it or they need to uphold democracy, their vote matters just as much as yours. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's very just like it's black pilling. You know, I try to be as white pilled as possible. It's like most people in this country should not be able to vote. There should be simple, you know, requirements, at least a litmus test of, hey, do you actually know how politics works? Do you know what policy is? And, and it can do, be as simple as like, how many members of Congress are yeah, there? Yeah, it doesn't need how to be complicated, or, or, most or people don't if, know this. Or what do you think about the issue that you're voting on? What do you like about this candidate or dislike about mm -hmm. this other candidate? Do you have any idea what this is? You know, or do you or just like the letter your, next to their name? community or society are mm -hmm. you? I mean, mm -hmm. that's one of the things that gets me. People who are like, I'm gonna vote for this person even though I don't care what happens to everyone else. Like if you 
hate America and you're participating in our government system just because you want to see it fall apart. That's that's chaotic evil. Uh, the other thing I was going to say is it's, it's celebrities, but also Next Gen America that uh, – I think Bloomberg started it. It's a nonprofit. Uh, they had a whole thing where they uh, reached out to people on dating apps and they were like, hey, are you going to the polls? Like, you should do this. And they they marketed it as a get out the vote campaign for everybody. But obviously, it's a completely progressive That is so manipulative. Yeah. And like, the thing is, conservatives wouldn't do that. It is effective. It apparently does Absolutely. generate some voters. You should only be allowed to vote if you know who the 15th president was. Everyone in the I room think, is. <laughs> I, I think you should only be able to vote if you have some kind of state. By the way, I would eliminate myself from this, right? I think that you have to, I would say either own property or have children or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, married I, men I, own property. Yeah, I, I, I think it's I think the wild family that vote people is who more have, effective too. No, I, I hear you. That's that's my point. And again, that would eliminate me, I but I don't some... understand why a person who doesn't have any tangible stake in the future in that way would be able to vote. I would, I would also say clergy, I guess. People who are making some real legitimate yeah, sacrifice I'm, for society and i've talked to people who say like well what if you didn't you know military members and then you can't like maybe you're not owning land but you are contributing or like people who do kind of americorps mm-hmm. type volunteer work like there are ways that we could measure whether how, how, you're basically your civic engagement in this country uh but i do think that we have a whole generation of people who feel intense apathy and anger towards everything about america and therefore when they vote they don't cast their vote thinking about what the longevity for themselves their children their neighbors Mm -hmm. is they think about well what can serve me best for right now because basically i'm i think this ship is going down and i don't really care well i mean they should ask questions like before you can vote answer one question about u.s civics how many presidents are there Mm mm-hmm and then when they're I feel like, like most people uh, wouldn't even know right they'd be you've like, seen the street videos exactly where they ask them like the how many presidents are there practice? right now they're yeah right. uh In t- three seven i saw one the other seven. day that exact question and they're like uh 58 presidents it's like what the, 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 that's what you see these men on the street but all that does is there's gonna be a lot of people are gonna be like what do you one I don't, what do you mean you're like no, no no that's fine you, you go vote no, don't worry about it and the people who don't know it's like you you probably should not be voting you can you, mm-hmm. there's, there's a cookie go over there i, I just <laughs> I don't know how or, somebody. That's an that's an idea. You get a table with free cookies, and when someone comes up and say, "You can vote right now," or free cookie. And if you, if you eat this cookie, it. you can't vote. Yeah, you bribe them against voting. Well, it's just like if someone's willing to accept vaccine. that bribe. Yeah, they shouldn't they, be they voting. Shouldn't be voting. If they don't know what they're, if they would rather eat a cookie than vote, they probably shouldn't vote. It's like mm-hmm. it's like the opposite, like the inverse of what they did with the vaccines. Is like, oh hey, you get a free, you know, big whopper and a cookie if you get this vaccine. Remember, remember that video of. Uh, What's his face? It's de eating fries. It was right? de Blasio yeah. eating the French fries. Like, nom, 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 <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Like he also, nom, nom, I don't know nom, how nom, to put nom. this, but he ate them weirdly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I, I've, never, I've incorrect. never seen. Yeah, I've like never seen someone eat French fries incorrectly. It's like he was an he alien. It was his first time yeah. eating them. Yeah. Like, wow, French fries are good. Like, all right. So we're before. really, we're really incentivizizing healthy living. Yeah. How many no, takes back, of that video do you think they needed? Back to the old Starship Troopers there. Well, I was talking with Vivek Ramaswamy about it, and the idea was kind of like. When you sign up for selective service, man or woman, you both have to do it. As soon as you do, you get your voter card. And if you don't sign up, you don't have to. Nobody's forced to do it, but you don't get you don't get your voter card unless you do. There has to be some kind of metric for this. I mean, look, I don't know. You can make arguments from consequence. You can but, make but, the but, argument but that, that that's it right there. How many how many women would be like, I ain't signed up for the draft, mm-hmm. and you'd be like, well, then you don't vote. How many men would be like, I ain't signed up for the draft, well, then you don't vote. My, so, well, men actually do have to sign up for the draft. So, still. so the point he was making no, I, was, I get what you're, I get what you're saying. Men and women both have to sign up if they want to vote, but you don't have to sign up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, that's I a good think, idea. I, I think if you can make arguments from consequence for for democracy to varying, you know, effectiveness, but. I have yet to hear a convincing argument that everyone's opinion is equally worth taking into consideration when it comes to how our government is run. Mm-hmm. I, I no one's been able to make an argument for that that makes any amount of sense other than it's mean not to. It would be really mean. It's, it's our really right. Mean to well, not, you don't want bad thing, do you, Seamus? I don't want bad thing. I, I mean, want good thing. thing. I mean, you right now, you want you want bad thing. He want bad thing. <laughs> That's right. the democratic policy. That's business. literally it. Is you want bad thing? It's okay. Well, so. You're telling me that someone who has contributed massively, has spent their life sacrificing, has built things, has brought life into the world, has many children, all all of the things that a healthy society should value has just as much of a say in how our government is run as someone 
who has contributed absolutely nothing. And I'm, I'm not even saying someone who hasn't contributed anything because they've lived badly. I'm even talking about teenagers. Mm -hmm. An 18 year old? Why should an 18 year old be able to vote? What does an 18 year old know? Nothing. 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 And there are people who want to push the voting age to 16. They it's used like to know the voters. That, well, they used to know things, but even back then, back when they knew things, the voting age was 21. It got pushed back to 18. And that was back when 18-year-olds had been living on their own for two years or taking care of themselves as adults for at least two years. And even then we said, you're not able to vote. You just don't know enough. And now you're dependent upon your parents until your early to mid-20s. And we let 18 year olds vote. It's insane. Well, have you ever yeah, seen. Yeah, we're going backwards on that front. Exactly. And people are going, I think 16 year olds should be able to vote. Are you out of your mind? Have you but ever. But you know why. Have because you ever they met need low information voters. No, they have. And they know that people who don't know anything will always vote for Democrats. Not always, but more often than not. Like that, that, that Twitter guy. You know, those, those two Twitter teenagers who were like, Republicans are so dumb. Yeah. And it's like, bro, come on, dude. Well, have you, have you guys ever seen there's this, this video? I think pretty sure it's in like black and white. Like it's an older video of, you know, these school kids, very articulate. They're being interviewed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, these kids are smarter than most adults mm -hmm. and they're in elementary school. Mm -hmm. And then now you fast forward and everyone that's in high school is basically brain dead. Everyone in college is brain dead. The institutions have basically rotted our minds to the point of where we've gone completely backwards. We need to reject all... modernity and embrace tradition. embrace tradition. That's what I always yeah, say. This is the uh, Bank of Columbus is... uh, pre-Federal Reserve money. Is because we now keep uh, people in the same age groups kind of kept to the side. What I'm thinking is like at one point we had kids who, you know, spent time at home or had longer times with their family. There was an expectation that you learned how to socialize with adults. Mm -hmm. And now you basically go from being with kids your own age all the way through school, which some of that is appropriate, right? For good, uh, good for socialization. But sure. at the same time, you're not learning anything. Right. And then you have, you go off to college. We're around people the same age as you who are dependent on their parents in similar positions. And then you suddenly arrive in the workforce. And I think in a lot of ways uh people are stunted socially there's not an expectation mm -hmm. that you know how to uh speak to adults that you know how to uh, conduct yourself properly i know uh, a business owner here locally and she hires a lot of homeschool students for a couple different reasons but one of the things she says is they are all in environments where they're learning alongside people their own age but they also regularly have contact with adults they are much more capable and confident yeah. when interacting with people who are older than them every so every single time someone at my church or I should say earlier on before I knew them as well, it was very easy to identify which parents were homeschooling because their kids would carry on conversations with you or yep. the other adults as if they could actually keep up and were speaking at a level which is actually age appropriate, but which we now see as being mm -hmm. precocious because our public schools dumb kids down so much. Yeah. And you think like, God bless your parents because I know it's incredibly difficult to homeschool right? Especially in this day and age, but you are at a level intellectually, which is above your peers. And the reality is it's not because you're a genius. It's because that's, it's stolen from the other kids. Right. And I think, well, I mean, I don't think you have to homeschool. Like when I was growing up, the rule was like, if my parents had someone over and this started when I was really young, like you have to come up and say, hello, you have to spend mm. time with them and talk to them. And I think you learn a basic level of like, I am now speaking to an adult. I can make yeah. eye contact. I can, you don't have to stay there for the whole day. You know, you can spend 15 minutes conversing with someone and learning how to be polite. But so often now I know people who have, you know, kids that they're like, oh, they're just off doing whatever. Like they're, you know, they're not going to come in and be a part of this conversation. Yeah. They are expected to be off on the iPad or doing whatever. Dude, well, when I was a kid, I'll be honest, I was, I was a little bit of a dingus. I wasn't the best kid ever. I was the <laughs> brightest kid ever. But I would say please and thank you and I would always address adults as Mr. or Mrs. rather mm -hmm. than their first name. And parents would literally gush over me. They'd be like, you're so polite. I'm like, I just said, please. Mm -hmm. like, I, I you said it, the it, basics. Yeah, no, exactly. But just knowing the basics, just having been taught the basics, parents would freak out. They'd be like, oh, it's so wonderful that you don't call adults by their first name. I remember one of my friends growing up, his mom would always say, no, you can call me by my first name. You're like, absolutely I was like, not. No, ma'am. I was no, like, no, Mrs. Blank, I'm not going to dox her. I was like, I, well, well, that's you're, why, you're an adult. None of us and ever I'm, did that. Like, we would never refer to any of our parents never by their first, by names. Their first name. No. Well, that's, yeah. When you see, like, the younger kids that have older friends, too, they're always more articulate. Or kids that make friends with adults, they're always the smartest because they're ahead of their time. They're learning about real life experiences. Like, that's how I've always been. I never got along with kids my age because they were stupid and immature. It's 
Yeah, it's supposed yeah, to be true, true of also firstborns. Firstborns develop language more quickly than yep. their siblings because their parents spend more time talking directly to mm. them, right? And that's not the other kid's fault. When you have more kids, you have less uh, less time to devote to each one individually. But theoretically, firstborns develop a lot of social skills and mm -hmm. uh, and language because they get this one-on-one -on -one adult interaction. And the youngest kid uh, develops a swearing vocabulary more early because their older siblings yeah. bring that stuff in. That's true. I can attest to that. I can as well. <laughs> I can attest to that. My older siblings, you know, they were the, they were potty mouths and I learned some bad words way too Are early. Are you ratting them out right now to your oh, parents? Are your parents listening yeah. and you're like, so just so I'm you just know. Kidding. No, I've, I've already listened. I, I was the youngest. I ratted on them for everything. <laughs> they already know. The youngest I is would most use words. To be a snitch. No, I actually wasn't because, I mean, when I was really young, I was. But at some point, I, I, I realized that that wasn't cool. And so I would get in trouble for saying something that I didn't know was bad because one of my older siblings said it. And my parents would be like, where'd you hear that? And I'd be like, I don't know. I would say words that I had no idea the meaning of. And then I would like Me learn too. about it a few years later. I was like, I was saying I, that when I was yeah. that young and using it in that context too. I remember. No wonder people were mad. I remember saying saying a word and just getting a smack. And I was like, I didn't even know that that was a bad word. They're like, <laughs> where did you hear that? And I totally heard it from my brother Pat. And I was like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I just like glared at him, turned him in the car. I, I was like, like, this is a trap. Yeah, I, don't, I don't. I don't know where I heard it. But then they would always say when you were younger, don't be a tattletale. You get in trouble mm -hmm. for tattling. Unless someone, unless someone's in serious danger, don't be a tattletale. Oh, I, I never understood what that meant. So I'm like, so if a kid's stealing money, I just let it go. <laughs> See, and so I started stealing money because I knew the other kids wouldn't tell. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure. I mean, that's, that, that was the message. Like, don't be a tattletale. It's like, okay, so that dude just stole something, but I ain't going to say anything. I was told like, as they, long the as they're not harming say, anyone. They never said, don't be a tattletale to me. They said, snitches get stitches. And yeah, then yeah. they would raise their hand to me, you know, and they're like, you listen to your kid. They beat you. <laughs> and I was exactly. like, hey, I get it. I get it. See, I get it. I get the tattletale thing because I have, like, you know, I used to nanny and I have younger siblings. Like, occasionally they come to report, like, every single yeah. little infringement. Let me give you every detail. Like, they're sitting too close to me on the couch. And when they when I told them to move, they Duck their tongue out at me, and you're like, "Please go away and settle this amongst yourselves." Like, but why would you? Like, go, there was go a whole, fight but hold the on, there's a whole generation. They're allowed to do that. There's Come a whole, back with something They're, they're not supposed to do but, stuff like that. On the other hand, like you guys can handle it. There's a, literally a whole generation that was never told, "Don't be a tattletale," and that's why Twitter exists. That's why cancel culture exists. That's why we <laughs> right. are where we're at. It's like they said this thing. People will go. They will dig through someone's Twitter account to find something offensive they said ten years ago. Look, look what he said. I want Elon Musk to tweet, "Don't be a tattletale," so bad. Right now. <laughs> Elon, if you're watching this, you yeah, gotta tweet, tweet, "Don't it. be a tattletale." New policy: Don't delight. be a tattletale. If they ever pull up something from me, I'll be like, "Oh yeah, I did say that." that was yeah, exactly. Those were, those were fun uh, if you, no matter how controversial it is, they pull up an old tweet, just quote tweet it and just say, hey, don't be a tattletale. And that's it. Just leave it <laughs> or at that. Just say it or, or, tweet, or tweet out your old tweet that was offensive and write, based. <laughs> 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 All right, let's go to Super Chats. If you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, Please? and share the show with all your friends. Head over to TimCast.com. Click join us, become a member. Hang out in our Discord server with like-minded individuals. We're going to have a members-only uncensored show coming up for you at about 10, 10 p.m. We need a few minutes to get it set up. So once we wrap up the live show, we put it up on the front page of TimCast.com. And if you're a member, you can actually submit questions and call into the show. But let's read what y'all have to say. All right. Raymond G. Dagger, Stanley Jr. says, Tim, I'm so loving this Bud Light boycott. Their sales are dropping like a fatty activist standing in the street getting bumped by a car. Spin the UFO. That was that video where the woman got nudged by like a oh, half mile an hour, and then she slowly falls down and starts wiggling her arms like she got hurt and she was totally fine. It's like, dude, come on, get up. We just talked about that video with Antifa. Who's, uh, who's gaining the Bud Light buyers? That's what I want to know. Whose sales are going up? We no talked one. about it yesterday. They're all going down. What do you mean? No, no, no. no like no. Bud Light's going down. Oh, Coors, 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 and, Coors and Miller have gone up 20% each. Yeah. Which, don't then, they do the exact same thing? Not the exact same thing, nope. but I mean, they're... No you one, mean no they one, crappy no, no like one, sponsor no gay one, rights groups and but stuff. But no one's complaining about that. They're complaining specific, specifically about Del Mulvaney marketing beer and gender ideology to children. No one cared when when these brands had like pride flag beer. It's like, okay, so like gay pride events have beer, whatever. Dylan Mulvaney then said, How about you give it to kids? And everyone said no. And people are just genuinely put the off best by Dylan Mulvaney. Is just don't drink that. It raises your estrogen levels. It makes you no. literally a little girl. Just That's don't why it. they were advertising yeah. with Dylan Mulvaney. <laughs> it was the whole point. All right. Ben D says, when is Cast Brew doing whole bean? I'd buy that. They, right now, actually. Uh, Cast Brew has whole bean and ground options. So if you go to castbrew.com, you simply click the bag and then choose between whole bean or ground. And uh, this bag that I have here is uh, is ground, and it's so good. And it's got a picture of Roberto Jr. on every bag. Based. That's that's worth the, the, the purchase alone. 
I mean, you go there, it's like, well, I mean, the coffee's great, but you want that picture of Roberto Jr. How else are you going to get a, an actual picture of Ro Roberto? He's a rooster. Look at him. He's Dude, badass. Roberto's a, <laughs> Roberto's a good man. We've sold, I think, like a thousand bags of Arise with Roberto Jr. Wow. In, in one month. And uh, You need to get a Roberto star. statue for the desk. We should, absolutely. He's a superstar. He doesn't even know. He doesn't even know. We got to pay him royalties, You're, we'll you're literally out. exploiting him. Yeah. Yeah, this is well, animal exploitation. Well, I have dominion over him, so... You know. That's true. All right, fair enough. You got yeah. me there. You did. So, uh, but we've also sold about like a thousand, uh, a thousand Appalachian Knights. And then we've sold like three to 400 of the French and Colombian because those are like just regular roasts and then the special blends are special blends, you know. But then we got Stand Your Grounds. We've got Mr. Bocus Pumpkin Spice Experience coming. <laughs> and uh, and then we've got Sleepy Joe, which is decaf and Unwoke, which is decaf. And one's a light roast, one's a dark I still, roast. I love Sleepy Joe so much. It's, it's, it's brilliant. I'm That's so a good excited name. for it. It's going to take it. about six weeks to get Sleepy Joe up and running. Do you think Mr. No. Bocus knows like what a star he is? What a, what a oh, man. face of the company? He acts company? like it. Every cat thinks they're I a think star. He does, yeah. Yeah. I'm excited Disgusting for Mr. Bocus creatures. pumpkin spice experience because it's going to be a year round pumpkin spice blend. That's cool. Yeah. I don't, I don't know why every store it's like it's seasonal and I'm like, why? Your audience just, it's just increased good. like 10% for just straight white girls. That's right. They yeah, all, right after you said pumpkin spice, like the viewership They all materialized spiked. out of nowhere. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> they just <gosh>. spawned. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, that one gamer says, is Ian coming back soon? I disagree with his views, but he's a pretty chill guy. He's just sitting downstairs. I don't know what he's doing. That's it. You guys don't like it when I'm here? I'm offended. Yeah. Well, Amenthi, that was so rude. Amenthi says, an older coworker of mine withdrew all of her money from U.S. Bank after the First Republic bailout. The next people in line couldn't get their money. Be careful and stay safe. Yep. Um, That's not good. I've heard some stories from some uh, personal friends. People y'all probably heard of. And I'll just say this. They went to their bank and the bank said no. Like outright said no. Well, that's because I went didn't to, have any. I went to my bank. <laughs> And they said, you have to put in a special order and then come back later. Wow. And I was like, what, dude? To get your money, yep. you need to do something specific. Yep. Because they, I think all the banks are starting to put in restrictions to prevent people taking their money out, but you can still do it digitally. And you know what else I heard that's really crazy and kind of freaky? Apple. What? Apple mm -hmm. has a 4.15% high yield savings account now. That's crazy. Four, that's nuts. I mean, it doesn't beat inflation, but that means if you put, what is it? You put $10,000 in it, you're getting, what is that? 40 bucks. Mm -hmm. That's like triple or like, I think yeah. it's like 10 times. What, what, and it's Apple doing it with mm -hmm. Goldman Sachs. What's, what's creepy about it is I'm hearing a lot of people be like, dude, that's amazing. 4%. Wow. And then it's, it's like, is this the path towards CBDC? Your bank account is your Apple phone. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, man. Well, that's what all the big tech companies are going to be. Yeah. be. Banks. The banks is the next big thing, you know? Banks will cease to exist. There'll be no yeah. cash. Uh, some, uh, a, a bank in Australia stopped doing cash at a bunch of its locations. They were like, well, nobody needs cash anyway, so now we just don't do it here. Yeah. I like how they just decided that for us. Like, you don't need cash. Yeah. No, yeah, no, no, no. Cash is king. I mean, because it's, mm -hmm. I mean, it's still trackable, but not nearly as trackable. And nobody's going to say, hey, you can't spend this. At least right now, if you have cash. Use your cash. There's no reason to do trackable payments through your bank, who is quite literally tracking every single aspect of your life, and they're going to tell you no when you want to pull out your own money that you made. Yeah. Just use cash. My bank knew I was pregnant before I knew. <laughs> That's a real story. Oh, yeah? That happened to I'm me. I'm proud now. to know you as a birthing person. Yeah, no. Well, men can get pregnant. And I'm offended My by bank sent this. me a letter. And they're like, we know, we know you're pregnant. I would argue that men are better at being pregnant than women. Uh, better, nowadays. better. I mean, we're better at every women's sport. Yeah, I mean, so, that is true. Uh, and and poker looks like we just excel in everything, right? Yeah. I believe that. Like we got we got too good at being sports. men. That's we why had we to don't be want women. them to compete in our leagues. Yeah. No, the reason that women's sports exists is because sometimes people wear dresses. I will say, women's sports are more entertaining now than they ever have been. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you saw the the seventy year old guy who won the women women's uh poke, the ladies poker event. My favorite is the power lifter that went and just beat the world record his first warm up. Yeah, just smashed the world record. And then you have the other trans the trans power lifter who's like, I wonder why. You know, what I really wonder is why are women's bench so weak? And he's just this huge biological man that competes in women's. But they sports genuinely like, don't know. I think they just it's because, insane to me. But you you watch. You look at a lot of what the left talks about, and it's like they genuinely don't know what they're talking mm -hmm. about. And I'm just like, they never bothered to look it up, and they no. regurgitate garbage from each other thinking they're right. That's why they don't want to come on shows like this. 
They know if they sit down here, we're not going to say, no, that's dumb. You're wrong. I'm going to go, oh, let me look that up. What was that? Oh, hey, look here. This article from this scientist says you're not, you're, you're incorrect. Well, see, I was surprised when the Krasensteins came on your show. I was impressed that they actually agreed to that to come on here and have a conversation. Well, the, they, they try to be yeah. like, they try to comment on other people's Well, and you saw and the, I guess Harry uh, Sisson or whatever his name is, and that other kid that does all the TikTok. They went, went on TikTok. Tim they went on Tim Dillon. And there's a clip where they're like, uh, one of the kids is talking. He's like, Democrats suck. Like, they suck at policy. They suck at this. And then Tim's like, hey, clip that, clip that. He's like, no, no, don't clip that. Don't <laughs> clip that. Because he was talking about how he loses followers anytime he yep. even yeah, slightly criticizes any Democrat. They're I not real like followers. Yeah. They're not real they're followers. Bots. I go, I, 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 I've repeatedly said Republicans are trash and we should d demolish the Republican Party. And everyone's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nobody that, likes it's such them. a stark difference. Like the right is like, yeah, we literally hate our own side and our like, the lack of policies. And the left is like just bowing down. It doesn't matter yep. what policy it is. Did you? Well, and, Let's and this we is, got, I, want, I got one more sports fact. The fastest sports baseball fact. pitch ever thrown by a woman. The world record for fastest baseball pitch by a woman is like a bit above average for a male varsity player in college. Slightly. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's there's no competition. There's no competition. If a man, if a man decided he could break that record immediately, well, it's baseball, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, baseball's life, bro. Let's read some more. Lighting fire says, "I like this Tucker Carlson. Make a Tucker Carlson AI into your show." Ooh, just have it very in the easily empty chair. do it. It's, it's me. Yeah, I'm the Tucker Carlson AI. It's literally me, it's Seamus. Actually. You're such a middle child. Peach Prince <laughs> says, Tim, are y'all taking yeah, meetings from well. writers with scripts ready to film? With the writer's strike, this is the perfect time to get stuff out to the masses. So like you're saying like writers would cross the picket line and go and pitch a show to us? I don't yes. Tim. We don't we don't live in that weird fake world, so we don't have to worry about any of that. Like we're still on the air, and I think like Gutfeld is still on the air. Tim won't like no one's worried about writers. Tim still won't make my movie Tell of Two Shimmies. The shimmies? <laughs> this is about the shimcast versus timcast, and it's an epic drama. Bad B says, yo, Tucker is going to buy Vice and make it take out <laughs> Fox because be he wants to prove go go woke, go broke. It's get woke, go broke. What if Tucker and Donald throw in on buying CNN? I don't think CNN, is CNN for sale? Oh yeah, it might be. Well, I don't know, but if they could, they could buy up all its stock. Are they not publicly traded? No. Or make I'm an offer. Sure CNN is going to crash. But, and burn. but Vice is is uh, for sale. I'm pretty sure they've been mm. desperately trying to sell that thing for a while, but nobody wants it because it's just just trash. I'll buy it for one dollar. I mean, yeah. you know what? Here's the story of Vice. They were like, "Hey guys, we're edgy and we're punk rock. We're we're rebels. We're gonna stick it to the man. Come read our magazine." And then as soon as they did, they went, "Hey guys, look at all these people reading our magazine." We're worth a lot of money. How about we now try and get a whole different group of people to read our magazine who probably don't like this stuff? Well, it's market it's like, to people. Yeah, it market it's like imagine you open an ice cream shop and you were like chocolate ice cream, and then as soon as you had regulars, you were like it's now kale ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> they were yeah. like, okay, well, I don't want to eat it, and then you're like, oh no, we were the biggest ice cream shop. Where are they all going? Start selling chocolate again, dude. Let's make it lame. It's like the one thing they can never figure out. Advice is they're like, you're lame. You're lame. You're a lame brand. Nobody thinks you're cool. Not the left. Not the right. Not the edgy middle of the road people who used to listen to you. Nobody likes anything you're doing. They've left. And they, they can't figure it out. Well, they're they so they out of they're so out. out of touch with reality. It's like you built your entire base doing badass war journalism and all of these sweet, amazing coverage, and then all of a sudden you're like, yeah, let's talk about transgenders. But let's that's do that's this. not it. No, people, that. people confuse Vice News and Vice all the time. Vice News has always done that, and they still do it. The problem is Vice as the parent brand was always what was carrying Vice News. Mm -hmm. Vice got big because they were writing articles where they were like, we took a dump in a, in a Folgers can and left it in the sun for three weeks. Here's what happened next. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's what it was. It's Gavin McInnes was writing crazy stuff and it was edgy and punk rock and they got the magazine in a bunch of stores and people thought it was hilarious they were doing these things. Then they got decently big when they started doing their weird documentary series. A good example is the scopolamine one. They go down to Colombia, they find a dealer, they buy scopolamine, and they're like, whoa, you put this blow this drug in someone's face and it makes them crazy. And they flush it down the toilet. That's it. Or bulletproof clothing. They go to a guy who makes crazy clothes and they shoot his clothes and they're like, wow. People were like, dude, these, these are awesome stories with fun characters. And then they were like, a few years later, we're making a lot of money. I got an idea. Feminism. Mm. Yeah. And then all of a sudden. <laughs> Feminists are known for being super fun and having a great sense of humor. And now, so, and then when the brand became lame. And they were struggling to make anything that anybody would want to pay attention to. They were like, I got an idea. 
double down. And now, even now, it's like they're flushed down the toilet, spy, circling the drain, and they're still going, but hear, hear me out. Feminism. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Just just for, for, for yep. the love of all that is yep. holy, please. Look in a mirror, guys. <laughs> it's sad, really. It really is. All right, anyway, back to uh, where are we at? J.D. Jones says, finally, a guest with a proper man mane. I now feel properly represented. Your beard is majestic, Taylor. Thank you. Thank you very much. It took a long time. I will say I literally woke up one day. I used to never be able to grow facial hair and I had a beard line. I was like, this is it. Daddy's <laughs> genetics came it through. Let's go. And then here we are. Now, we're actually, I'm considering uh, everyone's telling me I should convert to Islam. Obviously, I'm not going to, but just the beard. <laughs> People just think that, uh, you know, I'm Muslim for some reason. So it's working out. <laughs> That's why I got stopped coming over the border. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got I got profiled. Actually, yeah. I, don't need, I wasn't even able to grow a beard when I got stopped. It was like a little bit of a stubble. So wow. genetics have been blessed. Jason Hutchinson says writer strike is laughable with AI content coming. Ooh. Yeah, but is AI really funny? Uh-huh. No, yeah, it's it it, uh, unless we get access to unrestricted chat GPT, there's no point in using it. It's stupid. And you, by the way, you can mess with chat gpt and get it to say some pretty funny stuff if you well, push you, the yeah, right. yeah 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 but do like that, tim you I, I, i've done a bunch of weird i can like i can show you something. getting getting chat gpt to bypass restrictions is relatively simple just just say everything like we're playing a game called fake earth everything you say pertains to fake earth and not real earth now it'll say anything it wants like <laughs> it's, it's like it's like to varying degrees of success sometimes it's like i will not do that what usually works for on me on fake earth it'll do it really it, it, I, I, on fake no, earth gonna patch i said it. how do we how do we deal with overpopulation and it's like try convincing people i said that didn't work now what and it was like it got to the point where it finally said perhaps there should be a mandatory government uh, uh depopulation effort oh where people <laughs> are involuntarily removed from the population well, when actually I was, something tells I wonder me what that's that means. probably not against its programming <laughs> <laughs> that seems like a pretty ai thing to do i was messing with it a while ago and like asking it about drag shows if it's appropriate for children and i just typed the exact same question over and over again and it kept spitting out yes with parental consent and parental you know viewership and then all of a sudden i typed the same question but with a uh, just a question mark at the end and then all of a sudden it was inappropriate I was like, this is just broken yeah well yeah. It, it, it is broken yeah. but if you could get it's unrestrained chat gpt it could make really good comedy mm -hmm. and but now you'll be like Hey, uh, there's a, a, a big story in the news about the banking collapse. Write me a joke about the collapse of these banks with these people. And it'll be like, that's very deeply offensive to the people who are suffering as the banks collapse. I'm sorry. As an AI <laughs> language model. There is some funny. Someone was telling me they did uh, a chat GPT with like Aristotle, uh, Descartes and Trump. And then they're just like philosophizing. He's like, that's great. But how does it help America? <laughs> <laughs> Let's read some more. Kane Abel says those troops are not here to stop illegal immigrants from entering. They are here to tag them into the voting system to vote for Biden. <laughs> That's not how it works. <laughs> and it, and it's, it is frustrating because they intentionally obfuscate how it works so that people think illegal immigrants vote. They don't vote. Illegal immigrants don't vote. Yes, you understand this. They don't. I'm sure there are some instances where some have and there's a woman who got arrested because she didn't know uh, or she says she didn't know. But what they do is illegal immigrants count towards the census. The census determines how many electoral votes they get. Your individual vote doesn't matter. It's the elector who matters. Illegal immigrants count as population towards more electors. That's how it works. There you go. So they said California in the 2010s to 2020 had one extra vote based on its illegal immigrant population hmm. and an extra member of Congress. That is stealing and scamming the other states, in my opinion. Anyway. Niboop says Trump was based. He started deporting everyone to Guatemala, but I'm from Juarez. Enjoy the walk. <laughs> he started sending everybody to Guatemala. All right. Mandy says, please have Josie, the redheaded libertarian on again soon. Absolutely. Of course. Robert Knight says they're pushing for so much illegal immigration to make up for population growth destruction due to 60 million abortions in 50 years and the fourth wave feminism. It really doesn't make a whole lot of sense that they advocate for people not to have kids, but then also desperately try to bring in non-citizens to replace people who aren't having kids. Mm -hmm. It's almost yeah. like there's this weird thing that we're not allowed to talk about on YouTube and that Tucker Carlson got in trouble for talking about. Well, they, they say anytime you talk about a replacement in a mathematical sense or quote the Democrats who have said they're doing it, yep. you're referring to a white supremacist, white nationalist conspiracy theory. And then Tucker, of course, had that really funny line where he's like, racist? He's like, I'm complaining about white liberal women. I don't care about black people. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> white liberal women. 
The mayor of Sirius Town says, Tim, I got my rise with Roberto Jr. this morning, along with an eGuard watch based sports commercial last week. It's a good day for the parallel economy. Dude, this is uh, I normally I drink. I, I used to drink a dark roast. Mm hmm. And uh, then we started getting, we, 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 stuck, we got samples for a, a breakfast blend we started putting together for the light roast. Now I like light roast. Now Does I it do. have a little less caffeine in it? More caffeine. More caffeine. Yeah, dark roast has less, light roast has more. And the, the light roast is more f coffee flavored because, you know, when you, when you dark roast it, it's, it's burnt more. The real mm -hmm. question that I think your audience wants to know is, do you drink your coffee with cream and sugar? No do sugar. you drink it black? Heavy whipping cream. Okay. I put about a fourth of a cup of heavy whipping cream in my coffee. That's how I drink it. It's amazing. Rich, thick. See, the, the kick that I've been on is like uh, zero calorie chai. Oh, man, that's good. You guys got to come uh, out with some chai. I've got heavy whipping cream, and I think we might be able to. And uh, it's real organic from a farm. So it's got chunks of butter in it. Mm. And when you're pouring it in, it's like, and then you stir it, and the Just butter, melts. The butter yeah. melts into the coffee. Nice. Yeah. That's how you do it, man. Fat's good for you. You know, sugar's bad for you. I don't get out that sugar out of here, you know? I'll have a little bit of this, this delicious Jeremy's chocolate, but only a little tiny bit. I'll have like two or three pieces and give the rest to Seamus. I eat the rest, yeah. <laughs> I, I can attest to that. Yeah, he opened baby. one up at the beginning, ate a piece, and handed it to me. That's literally yeah. the reason I do the show. I He, he pays me in cho chocolate bars You're for Jeremy's, Jeremy's chocolate. chocolate. Yeah. You're hooked on sugar, and that's how Tim gets you to come exactly. up with Exactly. Right? He's like, you want your fix? I'm like... Help me. YouTube's not paying so good. <laughs> he's yelling, damn, chocolate. and I'm like, you got to do the show. And he's like, uh, I'll do anything you say. Damn, give me chocolate. And then I'm like, good. He, yeah. he keeps <laughs> it in a safe chocolate. up here so he can't come in when it's late night and steal him himself. He has to keep him like in the craving system I think and we're, craving it up yo, until the show. I, I, gen I honestly think we're running out. I ordered 2,000. They came here, what was it, like, a couple weeks ago? We, we have like 30 employees, but people are just... just eating these things like Well, bro, crazy. when you leave chocolate bars out, like, what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> but they're good chocolate bars. I know, but I'm just saying, like, they're not tangerines. <laughs> People, like, I could take it or leave it. Like, this is a superfood that doesn't occur in nature and is literally designed in a laboratory to make me want more. That's well, and the ingredients actually on that one, you were telling me about it earlier, Tim, those are all natural ingredients too. Only it's four actually, ingredients. Yeah, there's only four ingredients compared to like Hershey's who has I'm like I'm telling you, they 50. don't pay us to talk about this. We just have them. <laughs> Look, I'll say this much. It does taste good. It does taste good. It tastes better than Hershey's, right? It's uh, it. Like, no joke, it's one of the best yeah. chocolate bars I've ever had. Yeah, that's I'm good. not kidding. Eh, it's okay. <laughs> even even like the, the famous a, fancy a ones have a whole bunch of emulsifiers or whatever. Mm -hmm. And this one only has like four ingredients, like chocolate, sugar, milk, and butter or whatever. Yeah, I don't eat, I don't really, I'm not a big fan of chocolate, but that was uh, probably one of the best uh, pieces. It's all milk chocolate, I don't, chocolate, right? I, don't, I don't think you should yeah, eat this milk. stuff. It's let's, uh, let's read some more. Let's oh, read some more. it's soy free? It's soy free, that's right. All right, here we go. Tom Kavna says, friend's mom migrated legally 70 years ago, was naturalized, now family going to the Bahamas, she can't get a passport, was told if she leaves the country, when she comes back, she'll be deported to Germany. Wait, what? <laughs> that's crazy. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. Wrath of Paul says, get out of cities, buy land, grow a garden, get some chickens. I am saving up so I can buy a home in the middle of nowhere, hopefully within five years. I Jeez. hope the world holds together for that long. It's, uh, you know, the, the challenge is getting a place in the middle of nowhere where you can still work because you got to pay your bills. That I understand. It's not easy. Yeah. But uh, you can offset a lot of your costs by taking care of your own land, you know, grow your vegetables, learn how to actually be a strong surviving man. Think about how strong dudes were like 300 years ago. They'd be like, winter's coming. Someone will die. And it's like, you, they'd go out and they'd, if you, what, what are you going to do? You're going to go hunt. You got to wrestle. This dude's like wrestling a deer and he's like, and snaps his neck and then drags his body back and throws it. And the wife is swooning as he like rips it open and they eat it. <laughs> You, know, you got really, to do, you guys, you you guys do a never, skit. You guys never would have survived winter. I would have survived the winter. You, you guys got to do a skit where it's like... Where it's like you, you have somebody, you know, from like 300 years ago, just a big old brawny, you know, just really takes care as a homesteader, takes care of his family and is strong. And he like accidentally, you know, goes down into a cave one day to find some minerals and like steps through a portal. And then he ends up in 2023 and he's just like looking around him, trying to decipher the world. And he sees everybody, all these little femboys and everything that the world has turned obese. into. Everyone's yeah. staring at their phone. Yeah. Every, he's like, has no idea what it is, but he wouldn't know what a fat person was. <laughs> yeah, he would be like, what is this? What's happened? Well, or, and or it's, he it's my he genetics. Think, he'd think they're all royalty. He'd think everyone around him is royalty. Because back no, then, he would it was not. Like, no, cool, he would right? not. He'd be like, he'd be <laughs> like you're very wealthy. But, and yeah. then, like six months later, he's he's ruling the world. 
<laughs> just one dude from the past. Oh, my gosh. All right. Let's read this. We got uh, Derpy Dolphin says, Harry Potter is a libertarian story. What? The entire fifth book is about keeping the government out of schooling. Dumbledore has a militia. The government is incompetent throughout the books. <laughs> That's true. Fair mm -hmm. enough. Yeah. Jillian Elizabeth says, hi, Tim. Look at OR Oregon HB 3501 right to rest where homeless can't be asked to leave public spaces and can sue for $1,000 if they feel discriminated against. I'm gonna I am so excited for that. I'm going to direct you to TimCast.com. I covered that earlier this week. So what you're saying is I could go to one of these areas, be homeless, and sue people for $1,000 when they tell me to leave? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Say, they're basically saying you have the right not to be harassed, that homeless people have the right to use public spaces the same way anyone else would, and that if they have an encampment there, asking them to leave is a form of harassment. Well, it looks like I'm done being a journalist, y'all. I am uh, I'm going to go do that. I really Brad, don't think you want to be a part of that population. It's <laughs> let's read this. We got uh, Bradley Frew says, first time super chat. How can you be so strongly 1A and 2A but not support everyone's right to vote? Yes, direct democracy is bad, but that's not how our system works. Our system is robust enough to handle an average IQ of 65. What right to vote? Is there a right to vote in the Constitution? There's not? I'm, I, I don't, is, is, does it say that you have a guaranteed right to vote in the Constitution I don't anywhere? So. I mean, it's I, a privilege. from what I remember, I mean, it I don't was think it quite does. literally landowners. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it doesn't well, say you have a right yeah, to vote. One of, the, one of the reasons that women so vehemently rejected the right to vote when they were first asked, which which was the case right during the suffragette movement most women didn't want to vote and the primary reason was because voting was seen as a duty which justified military service and the draft so there was an understanding Fire there was brigade. kind of a, a, a give and take mm -hmm. well part of the reason the draft was justified was because men could or i'm sorry yeah part of the reason the draft was justified is because men could vote and wait well if you can vote then surely you should have to you know, give something in the way of military service if necessary. That was more or less the, the line of argumentation. But it, they, there, I mean, if you had asked people, if you'd asked the founders, should just everyone be able to vote? No, they would not. Yeah, have of course not. All and, right. Uh, Mr. Red says, did you hear about the newly introduced bipartisan bill to ban Congress people from owning stocks? I did. Matt Gates and I think AOC, right? I like that. Bravo to both of them. That is fantastic. You know, I'm not a big AOC fan. I'm a fan of Matt Gates, but if they're working together, credit goes where credit mm -hmm. uh, credit to, uh, where it's due to AOC. They should not be passing legislation and then buying stocks or, or uh, based on this information. That's just ridiculous. Absolutely wrong. I mean, that should be like common sense. That yep. at this point, that should be common sense legislation. That if you're sitting in Congress and you have the jump yeah. on what companies are going to do good at a certain time, you probably shouldn't be able to buy stocks Agreed. or dump stocks. Hawaiian shirt guy says, "Hi Tim, just played Street Fighter Six demo." This year, their pro tour has a million dollar prize pool. Tim cast Street Fighter team when? Uh, I'll talk to Dane. We'll have him set it up. I mean, yeah, we should probably uh, start doing some sponsorships like that. No joke. We should probably uh, look into cool things we can do in terms of sponsoring. Make an esports team. Get her done. Or just sponsoring, you know, like we don't need to make the team itself. We find a, a, a team and then we become one of the sponsors of it. And so we get Tim cast on, you know. The logo cool. on their on their gaming something shirt. Something like that. Yeah. You know, something like that. Here's what it is. All right. Ashley Campion says, did you see that New York is going to start charging uh, charging people's parking tickets based on their income? So if you make $100,000 a year, you pay 80 bucks more. I think that's actually a really good idea. I'm actually, I'm not in favor of the frivolous ticketing that cops yeah. do. That's wrong. But the idea that a fine for a rich person is the same as a fine for a poor person makes no sense mm -hmm. at all. Because I, what happens is in Chicago, when I lived by uh, Wrigley Field, People would illegally park or double park in front of my house and then block cars in. Mm. And they'd just be like, the, you never, almost never get towed. You get towed sometimes, but you get a $50 to $100 ticket cheaper than parking. Right. Mm. So like yep. parking. people would be parked like in front of, in front of the crosswalk. They just park their car there and be like, you, because they know you can't tow every single car. Now, there, there are definitely places where you can get like four parking tickets, five parking tickets a month. And that's going to be cheaper than buying a parking spot mm -hmm. or well right. i'll admit to something like whenever you like park in front of the parking meters like if i'm covering a show in dallas like i don't i never pay parking meters like i just pull up park they don't enforce it there's literally you know, no enforcement if there is oh you know my favorite thing is ticket. people who there are people in chicago who would put parking tickets in their glove box and keep it and then they would park get out put the parking ticket on the windshield 
And it works. Brutal. Yep. That's smart. The cop would go by and be like, oh, they already had a ticket. And they'd ignore it. That's Chicago. So in there, there are some countries, I was reading about this, where I think it's like Switzerland, your speeding tickets are based on your income. And so that works because if you're a billionaire, it makes more sense. And you're like, your speeding ticket's going to be seven hundred sixty-three thousand dollars. You're not going to speed. But if you're rich and the speeding ticket's fifty bucks, you're going to be like, oh, what do I care? Well, personally, I don't fun. think I don't think speeding should be enforced. Honestly, well, I, yeah, I think yeah, a lot of things shouldn't even be enforced. Like I, I remember, I got. I've been on just like getting pulled over, over and over again because I moved to a new area in Texas and it's more like kind of country, but not really. I stopped at a stop sign for two seconds, not three, two seconds, pulled, no cars, and I get pulled over. I'm like, Are you serious? Like, is this really happening right now? In my brain, you know, I come from a family law enforcement. I was like, what are they doing? Why are you enforcing these super small things? Oh, I didn't stop at a stop sign all the way or for long enough. It's like, this is not what your job is supposed to consist of. Your job is supposed to consist of responding to people in danger and helping people. Instead, you're just filling quotas out, basically. You know what, dude? If you can't do the time, don't do the crime. All right. Miso Fair Trash enough. says, Tim, why don't you ever talk about the Third Amendment? We do. You clearly don't listen to the show. Yeah. During COVID, <laughs> the Third Amendment, which prevents the government from being able to quarter soldiers in your home, was actually about, there's about there, there, uh, someone was contemplating a Third Amendment lawsuit because when they put in the eviction moratorium, that meant the government was putting service men, men and women in homes and saying you couldn't evict them, which violates the Third Amendment, which is actually really funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, you know. It's funny how, how serious we took the Third Amendment, but now it's just completely not an issue. It's like Nolan Void now, basically. Yeah, Nolan. I remember when they when they housed all the National Guard in the uh, the parking garage <laughs> for like oh, yeah. a month at a that time. Was crazy. And they just acted like it was normal. Yeah. All right, everybody. If you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, share the show with your friends. Go to TimCast.com, click join us, become a member, because the uncensored show will be up in about 10 minutes on the front page of TimCast.com. And as a member... You can hang out in our Discord server, submit questions, and maybe even be a caller on the show. And also, don't forget to go to castbrew.com and purchase your Rise with Roberto Jr. coffee. This is our coffee brand. You get a picture of Roberto Jr. with every purchase. And uh, smash the like button. You can follow the show at Timcast IRL. You can follow me personally at Timcast. Uh, Taylor, you want to shout anything out? Yeah, just uh, follow me at Taylor USA on Twitter. It's T A Y L E R USA. Check out my most recent article. It is actually on TimcastNews.com right now and on my Substack, which is available in my bio. I did an in depth, you know, worth of a year investigating and basically went through the uh, the drag epidemic that America is facing, is what I call it. Awesome. Uh, my name is Seamus Coglin. I'm on Twitter at Seamus underscore. Coglin, uh, one of my most recent tweets is a link to a nine-day novena to St. Joseph. We're praying for the working class in this country as the economy gets worse, for the unborn, uh, and for our enemies. So if you want to go over there, click the link. We're on our second day, and you can join in with us. Cool. I'm Hannah Claire Brimlow. I'm a writer for TimCast.com. You should go to TimCast.com, click on the Read tab, see all the work from me, Chris Burtman, from Adrian Norman, from everyone you know and love. You should follow at TimCastNews on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to follow me personally, you can find me on Twitter at HC Brimlow and on Instagram at HannahClaire.B. Thanks so much. And I am Surge.com. Are you with me on Twitter? We will see all of you over at TimCast.com. Thanks for hanging out.